Good evening everyone I'm Dr Sandeep Sharma and I welcome you all to this revision session this is a focused revision session a kind of ultra rapid revision session which we are we are going to take up all the important topics related to medicine for the upcoming FMG exam and in this part 1 video today we will be covering GIT and hepatology if you look at past papers about 2 to 3 questions are asked from GIT and hepatology medicine is a vast subject uh, so not everything is possible to be uh, inculcated into this small time frame that we have but i will try to cover all the latest updates as well as all the trending topics which have a high yield in your upcoming exam uh kindly note that uh, this session is a revision session which is meant to cover all the major topics covered in the subject of medicine this is not a replacement for your existing medicine notes a lot of people after every session always ask sir uh, is it enough for revision yes it is good but if you say that it is a replacement for your existing notes no it is not a replacement for the existing notes having said that if you want to compile something quickly before the exam just save this video uh right now you are watching in normal speed once before the exam trick out time and watch in 2x speed and yes i will be providing pdf of this as well so you can revise from the pdf as well after taking out the printouts uh, kindly practice the previous year questions alongside this session because the topics which i have selected are based upon the previous year questions and the previous year topics and uh, medicine is a vast subject i have already told so only high yielding subjects have been discussed and at least one to two readings are needed because in first reading you only understand what is being said in the second reading onwards your retention becomes better so we are going to start with first of all in git the common important thing on which a lot of questions are asked that is esophageal disorders now we know that esophagus in case a patient is having esophageal disorder the majority of patients will come to you with the clinical complaint of dysphagia now you often come across words like dysphagia and odynophagia i hope you understand that dono same nahi hote hain uh, another thing i wanted to clarify that uh, the session will be in english because exam is going to be in english certain areas i will be saying some words in uh, you know common language or in hindi also but that will only be a repetition right so it will be majorly based in english so esophageal disorder whenever there will be esophageal involvement patient will have two types of symptoms most common symptom will be dysphagia dysphagia means difficulty in swallowing and second symptom which is sometimes seen is odynophagia odyno means pain so painful swallowing is called as odynophagia right so the first thing to know that clinical hallmark of esophageal disorder if they ask as a one liner thing the answer will be dysphagia whenever they will make a question on esophageal disorder the case scenario will have the word dysphagia mentioned there so if you have a question with dysphagia how you are going to proceed let us make a small flow chart here now whenever there is a patient with dysphagia there are two possibilities either dysphagia is happening to solids alone or dysphagia is happening to solids as well as liquids in case dysphagia is happening to solids alone you will suspect a likely structural cause of dysphagia in the patient कोई स्ट्रक्चरल मालफॉर्मेशन है जो ब्लॉक कर रहा है द फ्लो ऑफ द सॉलिड रिमेंबर दैट स्ट्रक्चरल मालफॉर्मेशन यूजुअली द लिक्विड्स आर नॉट अफेक्टेड ड्यूरिंग स्वेलिंग प्रोसेस सो डिस्फेजिया ओनली टू सॉलिड्स इंडिकेट्स अ लाइकली स्ट्रक्चरल कॉज फॉर एग्जांपल जेंकर्स डाइवर्टिकुलम फॉर एग्जांपल इसोफेजियल वेब्स ऑल दीज मैलफॉर्मेशन विल बी हैविंग अ स्ट्रक्चरल Uh, cause and they will be having dysphagia to solids on the other hand in case there is dysphagia to solids as well as liquids it is likely to be a dysmotility disorder for example achalasia cardia so in case it is a structural disorder what are the possibilities you will consider in case it is dysphagia to solids and it is a likely structural cause you will see what kind of dysphagia is mentioned in the question examiner bolega dysphagia is present to solid and it is intermittent in nature and it is non progressive so intermittent non progressive intermittent means kabhi kabhi hota hai episodically it happens does not happen all the time if it is intermittent and non progressive what conditions will you suspect the patient is likely to have either zenkers diverticulum or patient is likely to have a ring called as schatzkirs ring so these are the two possibilities you will consider in fact case the mcq is saying that it is a progressive dysphagia and there is weight loss associated with the dysphagia you will think of a likely structural cause something which is malignant so carcinoma esophagus should be suspected in these patients so ca esophagus will be suspected right on the other hand if the mcq is saying if the mcq is saying it is a 
solids and liquids dysphagia then it is likely to be a dysmotility cause so there will be two possibilities either the patient is having uh, regurgitation regurgitation is often present along with heartburn and some degree of retrosternal pain is present the likely diagnosis in the patient will be achalasia cardia achalasia cardia is a condition in which it is not a cardiac disorder i hope you know it is a condition in which the lower esophageal sphincter jo lower part hota hai esophagus ka it does not dilate when the peristaltic wave comes right so that is achalasia cardia and in case the mcq says that regurgitation is less common but the patient is having severe pain especially on eating quickly there was a past mcq on this as well if you look, practice the past questions so dysphagia to both solids and liquids and pain occurs in the chest on eating quickly and uh, regurgitation is usually mild or absent it is mild or absent in these patients the likely diagnosis will be a condition called as diffuse esophageal spasm diffuse esophageal spasm right so this is a flow chart which is very important understand this flow chart how to uh, incorporate into mcqs how mcqs are going to be asked let us have a look let us move further and try to discuss some case scenarios in quick revision i am discussing six or seven case scenarios here related to esophageal disorder five out of them are already passed questions in one way or the other right so let us start mcq scenario number 1 mcq examiner will say that there is a patient who is having intermittent dysphagia to solid intermittent dysphagia to solids means it is likely to be a structural cause of uh, esophagus disorder second there is regurgitation of undigested food more than 1 to 2 hours after eating thirdly there is halitosis halitosis means bad breath and sense of food sticking in the uh, throat that sensation will be complained by the by the child or the by the patient so in case intermittent dysphagia regurgitation halitosis and sense of food sticking is present and it is intermittent dysphagia to solid the likely diagnosis the likely diagnosis in the patient is going to be yes it is zenker's diverticulum zenker's diverticulum what are the key points about zenker's diverticulum that you should know zenker's diverticulum is considered to be a type of it is a type of pulsion diverticulum also called as pseudo diverticulum pseudo ka matlab isme actual diverticulum nahi hota hai diverticulum jo true diverticulum hota hai i hope you know that in a true diverticulum all the layers are herniating whereas all the hair uh, layers of the of the uh, gut wall they are herniating they are out pouching in case of zenker's diverticulum only mucosa and submucosa only mucosa and submucosa are herniating they go into the pouch there is no muscularis and there is no adventitia in most patients and that is why it is called as a pulsion or pseudo diverticulum where exactly does it happen if you try to see if you remember anatomy and if you have remembered ent also and surgery also there is a triangle known as kilian triangle where does kilian triangle appear so kilian triangle this is the so called kilian triangle if you look at the kilian triangle the boundaries below this you will find that there are horizontal muscle fibers of a muscle called as cricopharyngeus and superiorly you will have the fibers the lateral fibers of the inferior constrictor muscle that is the thyropharyngeus fibers in anatomy you know that there is a inferior constrictor muscle uske do part hote hain the upper part is thyropharyngeus and the lower part where horizontal fibers are there that is called as cricopharyngeus between these two layers between thyropharyngeus and cricopharyngeus ye anatomy question bhi hai where is kilian triangle located between thyropharyngeus and cricopharyngeus there is a space through this space there can be out pouching of the lower wall of pharynx right hypopharynx herniate karta hai where only mucosa and submucosa herniate that is called as zenker's diverticulum what is the investigation of choice in these patients the investigation of choice will be barium swallow and what is the therapy in these patients obviously the treatment will be surgery right and uh, how will it look like this is the barium swallow finding of zenker's diverticulum if you try to see here this is the zenker's diverticulum this uh, black part which is present post, uh, which is 
through which this herniation is happening which is present anteriorly and inferiorly to the zenker's diverticulum this particular part this entire part this entire part is called as the cricopharyngeus muscle right so this is the zenker's diverticulum and this part is the esophagus which is there so if they show i'm just removing this labeling so you can see easily so see here in case you find a barium swallow picture like this where there is a hanging diverticulum like thing uh, appearing very characteristic feature this is how barium swallow finding of zenker's diverticulum will look like right so visual question also covered let us move further and talk about the mcq scenario number 2 if the mcq examiner says that there is intermittent dysphagia to solids right there is barium swallow which shows a circular ring or a constriction in the lower part of esophagus particularly in the squamo columnar junction particularly in the squamo columnar junction and barium swallow looks something like this can you see there is a ring like constriction which is happening not completely occluding the lumen but causing dysphagia this type of ring like swallowing and photograph like this they will always mention question along with the photograph or they will simply give a photograph like this this is the so called what you call as schatzky's ring so what is the likely diagnosis here the likely diagnosis here is schatzky's ring schatzky's ring is again it's a ring like uh, constriction it is a congenital malformation again there is no muscularis layer involvement present here only mucosa and submucosa are usually involved and treatment of schatzky's ring is also surgery has a question been asked on this yes a visual question on this has been asked in the past right third scenario let us look at the third scenario now scenario number 3 says that there is progressive dysphagia to solid solid ko hai but progressive hai secondly there is weight loss in the patient thirdly barium swallow is showing a irregular filling defect also called as shouldering sign shouldering sign on barium swallow has been asked as a radiology mcq as a one liner also without image राइट तो शोल्डरिंग साइन किस में दिखता है शोल्डरिंग साइन वेट लॉस प्रोग्रेसिव डिस्पेजर टू सॉलिड व्हाट इज द पॉसिबिलिटी वी आर लुकिंग एट वी आर लुकिंग एट डायग्नोसिस ऑफ कार्सिनोमा इसोफेगस कार्सिनोमा इसोफेगस राइट एंड दिस इज हाउ शोल्डरिंग साइन विल लुक लाइक कैन यू सी इन दिस इमेज दैट देर इज irregular filling defect which is present and here also you can see that there is a irregular filling defect producing the typical shouldering appearance this type of appearance where there is a narrowing and irregular filling defect being there and then there is a tapering that is what you call as the shouldering sign seen in patients of carcinoma esophagus you need to understand that barium swallow is not a very sensitive investigation it is usually a early investigation but if they ask you what is the investigation of choice the investigation of choice will always be endoscopy in the patient so carcinoma esophagus itself is a important topic because questions are asked in that in pathology in medicine as well as surgery so what are the key points which are likely to be asked if you get a topic on if you get a case or question on carcinoma esophagus let us write down the key points first of all what is the type of carcinoma seen in esophagus in in case it is the upper two third of esophagus usually we find that the patient is having a squamous cell carcinoma and in case there is a cancer there is a carcinoma occurring in lower one third of esophagus then it is likely to be a adenocarcinoma squamous cell carcinoma will the risk factors will be alcohol and tobacco exposure so alcohol and tobacco exposure produce which type of carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma where the squamous cell carcinoma occur upper two thirds of the esophagus adenocarcinoma is usually associated with this is the variety which is usually associated with barrett's esophagus and this is the variety which is associated with jerd gastroesophageal reflux disease so which variety of carcinoma in esophagus occurs with jerd it is the lower one third and adenocarcinoma is common you need to understand that this dysphagia in patients of carcinoma esophagus is usually a late sign so any patient coming to you with carcinoma esophagus usually the disease has progressed they can ask you in the exam what are the poor prognostic features or poor prognostic signs where no therapy is effective only palliation will be needed and within 5 years majority of patients will die there are two important poor prognostic signs questions can be asked in uh, they have been asked in 
neat pg exam they can be repeated in fmg so poor prognostic signs include first of all in case carcinoma esophagus patient is having hoarseness of voice hoarseness due to recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy that is a poor prognostic sign and second in case the patient is having palpable cervical lymph nodes so in case there is lymphadenopathy that is also considered to be a poor prognostic sign in carcinoma esophagus now what is the uh, investigation of choice barium swallow finding we have already done investigation of choice is always endoscopy and if examiner asks you what is the most accurate investigation for staging particularly the t staging you know the tnm staging is there right so most accurate staging for uh, accurate for t staging is endoscopic ultrasound endoscopic ultrasound also written as eus and treatment will be either surgery or palliative therapy palliation depending upon what stage the patient is coming unfortunately most patients of ca esophagus come late and so the outcome is very poor and palliative surgery only symptomatic management is what we can do in most patients right so ca esophagus brief review is done let's move further mcq scenario number 4 in case mcq says dysphagia to both solids and liquids is present right so both solids and liquids you know where this is going regurgitation and heartburn is present retrosternal chest pain is present and barium swallow shows a bird beak appearance rarely you may find a rat tail appearance in the distal esophagus there will be tapering happening there will be a dilated esophagus lower part and then suddenly at the eso uh, lower esophageal sphincter region where stomach begins you will have tapering a beak like appearance being produced it, this is all pointing towards a diagnosis of achalasia cardia. Achalasia cardia. Have a look at the picture. You can see that there is a dilated esophagus and there is a bird's beak like appearance of the lower esophageal sphincter. Pakshi ke chonch jasa lag raha hai. Ek bada sa pakshi hai aur phir uska aage aisa chonch hai. So there is a bird with a pointed beak in the front sometimes it is also called as rat tail appearance although the word rat tail appearance is controversial rat tail appearance has also been described sometimes in carcinoma esophagus so that is why the word which examiners usually put is the bird beak appearance and bird beak appearance seen in which condition is a radiology question also it you can call it radiology you can call it medicine depending upon you know where you want to put it uh, during recall so it's a past question where it is seen, it is seen in patients with achalasia cardia. And what is the condition called as achalasia cardia? It is a condition in which the lower esophageal sphincter, LES, it fails to relax. Lower esophageal sphincter fails to relax when peristaltic wave comes. And so there will be, since it fails to relax, so there will be dysphagia to both solids as well as liquids. Now, there are a few important points about achalasia cardia which are asked in the exam, so we need to remember. What is the cause of achalasia cardia? Cause is unknown in majority of patients. However, autoimmune cause has been proposed, which is triggered, often triggered by a herpes virus infection or a similar non-specific viral infection. And due to this autoimmune cause, there is loss of ganglion cells. There is loss of ganglion cells in the myentric plexus in the myentric plexus of lower esophagus and because these plexus plexuses are absent so there will be these uh, ganglion cells are absent so peristaltic wave ayaga and it will not relax in response to this they can ask an exam is there any condition in which achalasia cardia like illness is produced by some parasitic infection yes remember that there is a disease called as chagas disease which is typically seen in South America caused by Trypanosoma cruzi. It does not cause achalasia, but it produces a achalasia-like disease in the patient. So achalasia-like disease can be produced by which condition? Chagas disease, Trypanosoma cruzi. Right? And uh, what is the investigation of choice in these patients? The investigation of choice in achalasia. It's a past neat PG question. It is high resolution manometry. There are many types of manometry. There is a classic manometry. These days we perform a high resolution manometry. I will show you the image also. So investigation of choice is high resolution manometry and treatment in these patients is uh, symptomatic therapy, 
treatment is actually you know no specific therapy is available and in severe achalasia and problematic achalasia we need to go for surgeries like heller's myotomy however for symptomatic relief you can use drugs like calcium channel blockers you can give a trial of nitrates you can also give a trial of sildenafil which is a phosphodiesterase inhibitor but all of these drugs are associated with side effects hemodynamic changes vasodilatation hypotension can sometimes happen so symptomatic cases may you can give them then there can be local therapy local therapy can be in the form of botox injection botulinum toxin injection injected into the uh, into the non responding lower esophageal sphincter has been shown to produce improvement from 4 to 6 month lekin har 6 mahine ke baad you will have to repeat the injection and what is the surgical management of choice the surgical management of choice will always be pneumatic dilatation pneumatic dilatation pneumatic dilatation alone can cause a uh, reflux in the patient so pneumatic dilatation is always associated with a procedure called as heller's myotomy heller's myotomy involves uh, heller's myotomy along with partial fundoplication partial fundoplication बेसिकली बता देता हूं ये तीनों चीजें करते हैं वॉट वी डू इन दिस पेशेंट इज न्यूमेटिक डिवाइस यूज करके वी ट्राई टू डायलेट द लोअर पार्ट आफ्टर इट हैज डायलेटेड वी डू सर्जिकल रिसेक्शन ऑफ द लोअर इसोफेजियल स्विंटर मसल विच इज नॉट रिस्पॉन्डिंग उसको कहते हैं हेलर माइटोमी वेन यू डू हेलर माइटोमी न्यूमेटिक डायलिटेशन वट विल हैपन इज देर विल भी चांसेस ऑफ रिफ्लेक्स एज अ साइड इफेक्ट तो आपको करना पड़ेगा पार्शल फंड ऑप्लीकेशन एंड पार्शल फंड ऑप्लीकेशन विल रिड्यूस द चांसेस ऑफ रिफ्लेक्स इन द पेशेंट राइट सो दिस इज द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ ए कैलेशिया कार्डिया दट इज ऑल यू नीड टू नो फ्रॉम द एग्जाम परस्पेक्टिव लेट इज हैव लुक एट द नेक्स्ट सीनारियो एमसीक्यू सीनारियो नंबर फाइव फोटोग्राफ ऑफ दिस वॉज आस्ट रिसेंटली इन एफ एमजी एग्जाम ट्वेंटी the question first of all scenario says that there is a patient who is having dysphagia to both solids and liquids there is chest pain on eating quickly there is retrosternal chest pain and barium swello shows corkscrew esophagus also called as rosary bead esophagus the likely diagnosis in the patient how will the barium swello look like barium swello will look something like this can you see this bead like appearance or a corkscrew like appearance this is what you call as diffuse esophageal spasm so what is the likely diagnosis here diffuse esophageal spasm cause is not clear many theories have been given diffuse esophageal spasm uh, otherwise is a rare condition investigation of choice is the same high resolution manometry needs to be done and treatment unfortunately no specific therapy is available you can try nitrates you can try calcium channel blockers but no satisfactory therapy is available in these patients so that is called as diffuse esophageal spasm this is the likely diagnosis in this patient let us move further and talk about mcq scenario number 6 now in case mcq says that there is a patient having dysphagia with food impaction food atak raha hai the food is getting impacted in the throat along with that there is a history of allergies or type 1 hypersensitivity disorders like asthma and food allergies in the patient and there is jerd gastroesophageal reflux disease is present and biopsy shows equal to or more than 15 eosinophils per high power field the likely diagnosis in such a patient is going to be yes it is going to be eosinophilic esophagitis eosinophilic esophagitis is a condition in which there is inflammation of the esophagus and infiltration by eosinophil पेरिफरल ब्लड में इसोनोफिल्स रेज्ड होते हैं नॉर्मली 50 टू 75 परसेंट पेशेंट्स में बट नॉट ऑल बट इन इसोफेजियल बायोप्सी यू विल ऑलवेज फाइंड इसोनोफिल्स टू बी प्रेजेंट एंड व्हाट विल बी द नंबर इक्वल टू मोर देन 15 इसोफिन पर हाई पावर फील्ड एंड इट इज मोर कॉमन इन पेशेंट्स विद रिफ्लक्स दैट इज जर्ड इट इज मोर कॉमन इन पेशेंट्स विद एलर्जीज एंड आस्थमास एंड व्हाट इज द ट्रीटमेंट टू बी गिवन द ट्रीटमेंट बिकॉज जर्ड इज देयर सो यू नीड टू गिव प्रोटोन पंप इनहिबिटर्स एंड अलोंग विद दैट स्वेलोड स्टीरॉइड्स locally acting steroids like budesonide can be tried in these patients that is the therapy of choice now there is a interesting thing there is a specific appearance of eosinophilic esophagitis seen on barium swallow that barium swallow that similar appearance is also seen on uh, when you do endoscopy in the patient so that appearance is looking something like this this ring like appearance is called as felin this when you do barium swallow as well as when you do endoscopy in the patient in eosinophilic esophagitis you find an appearance what you call as feline esophagus 
फेलिन इसोफेगस इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज इसोफेजियल शिवर इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज ट्रेकियलाइजेशन ट्रेकियलाइजेशन ऑफ द इसोफेगस फेलिन का मतलब क्या होता है कैट कैट का जो इसोफेगस होता है उसके अंदर देर आर रिंग्स लाइक ट्रिकिया राइट right? ट्रिकिया आपको पता है देर आर रिंग्स प्रेजेंट इसोफेगस में नॉर्मली देर आर नो रिंग्स बट रिंग लाइक अपियरेंस गेटिंग प्रोड्यूस्ड इन अ पेशेंट ऑफ इसोफेजाइटिस इज कॉल्ड एज फेलिन इसोफेगस एंड फेलिन इसोफेगस लुक्स लाइक दिस एज यू कैन सी कैन यू एप्रिशिएट द रिंग्स विच आर प्रेजेंट एज शोन बाई दी व्हाइट कलर डेरोज एंड कैन यू सी दिस एंडोस्कोपिक फाइंडिंग नॉर्मली इसोफेगस स्मूद होता है हियर यू आर फाइंडिंग रिंग लाइक अपेरेंस दिस ट्रेकिलाइजेशन ऑफ इसोफेगस इज वॉट यू कॉल एज फेलिन इसोफेगस एंड फेलिन इसोफेगस वन ऑफ द कॉजेज इज ई सिनोफिलिक इसोफेजाइटिस रिमेंबर दैट फेलिन इसोफेगस का एक कॉज है इसोनोफिलिक इसोफेजाइटिस इट कैन ऑल्सो अकर दिस कैन ऑल्सो अकर इन गर्ड पेशेंट्स इट कैन ऑल्सो अकर इन हाइटस हर्निया पेशेंट्स एंड ऑब्वियसली इट कैन अकर इन इसोनोफिलिक इसोफेजाइटिस सो ये डीडी है दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर ऑल दीज थिंग्स विल हैव द सेम टाइप ऑफ अपियरेंस दिस इज वॉट यू कॉल एज फेलिन इसोफेगस और ट्रिकुलाइजेशन ऑफ द इसोफेगस लेट्स मूव फॉर द सिनेरियो नंबर सेवन Now MCQ says a dinophagia is present. Painful swallowing, dysphagia may or may not be present. So in such patients, you will suspect a infectious cause of esophagitis. So you will suspect infectious esophagitis. Now infectious esophagitis, three re common reasons se ho sakta hai. It can occur due to Candida albicans, which is fungal infection. it can occur due to herpes simplex virus particularly hsv1 it can also occur due to cytomegalovirus now we need not go into details but candida ka jo esophagitis hota hai remember that when you examine these children on endoscopy you will find that there are curdy deposits on the inflamed esophagus so curdy deposits will be present and there will be a curdy or whitish color deposits will be there and these patients will have history of steroid use और इम्यूनो सप्रेशन तो एमसी क्यू बोलेगा देर इज अ पेशेंट हुज हैविंग आस्थमा और देर इज अ पेशेंट हुज हैविंग नेफ्रोटिक सिंड्रोम मल्टीपल टाइम्स द पेशेंट हैज रिसीव्ड स्टीरॉइड्स एंड ही प्रेजेंट्स विद ईसोफेजाइटिस ऑन हिस्ट्री टेकिंग यू फाइंड देर इज पेनफुल स्वेलोविंग अलॉन्ग विद डिस्फेजिया वॉट इज द लाइकली डायग्नोसिस लाइकली डायग्नोसिस इज कैंडिडा ऑन द अदर हैंड इन केस देर इज एच एस वी वन अल्सर आर प्रोड्यूस इन दीसोफेगस वॉट आर कॉल्ड एस Volcano ulcers, so they can ask as a one-liner. Volcano ulcers are seen in which esophagitis caused by herpes simplex virus one. And third is this CMV samp jaise snake-like. We call them as serpiginous or snake-like ulcers. Are seen in which type of esophagitis? They are seen in CMV esophagitis. Right. So this is MCQ scenario number seven and three common DDs. Let's move further and talk about some miscellaneous one-liners. First one-liner. Uh, can dysphagia occur due to esophageal compression by some external structure yes two external structures can produce esophageal compression first it can occur due to a double aortic arch it's a type of uh, cardiovascular malformation it can also occur due to aberrant right subclavian artery so aberrant right subclavian artery if you remember anatomy aberrant right subclavian artery is also called as arteria lusoria it is also called as arteria lusoria so dysphagia due to esophageal compression can be seen due to uh, these two abnormalities so look for these if it is mentioned then what is the investigation of choice for gerd yes it is always 24 hour esophageal ph monitoring 24 hour esophageal ph monitoring treatment of choice for gerd will always be PPIs, uh, pentoprazole uh, and similar esomeprazole can be used. That I am not writing. You know it already. And then they can ask you identify the test which is being performed. Have a look at this test. This is what is called as manometry. If you look on this side, the black and white side, this is called as the typical or classical manometry, where the manometry will always tell you pressure changes so pressure changes in esophagus you can see pharynx upper esophageal sphincter lower esophageal sphincter stomach so this is classical manometry of esophagus which is being performed they can show this image and ask you what is this being performed look at the second one it is a digital depiction and you can see 
द प्रेशर चेंजेस एज सीन एज सीन बाय अ कलर कोडेड मैकेनिज्म दिस इज वॉट यू कॉल एज हाई रेजोल्यूशन मैनोमीट्री द वन विच वी डिस्कस्ड ऑल्सो विच इज द इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस इन मेनी Esophageal dysmotility conditions. So high resolution manometry. So if they show photograph like this, this is classical manometry. If they show picture like this, this is high resolution manometry. How do we identify? Upper esophageal sphincter, esophagus, lower esophageal sphincter mentioned. Hai, colorful hai, and it is more of a continuous image with with color codedness, which is more, which is having a higher resolution. This is called as high resolution manometry. next we come to malabsorption disorder now my aim here is to tell you how questions are being asked and if a particular question is asked how you are going to mark it in the exam right so i'm not taking the usual theoretical way i'm going in a more practical rapid revision way so malabsorption disorder mein sabse pehle you need to know about the shilling test shilling test is a test which is used to identify the cause and the likely uh, presence or absence of b12 deficiency आजकल शिलिंग टेस्ट नहीं करते हैं वी नाउ हैव दी सीरम बी ट्वेल्व असेसमेंट बाय लाइजर टेस्ट विच इज मोर सेंसिटिव बट शिलिंग टेस्ट अर्लियर यूज करते थे तो पहला पूछ सकते हैं वट इज शिलिंग टेस्ट यूज फॉर इट इज यूज टू डायग्नोज प्रेजेंस एंड कॉज ऑफ विटामिन बी ट्वेल्व डिफिशियंसी ये पुराना वन लाइनर एमसीक्यू है राइट फर्स्ट पॉइंट देन शिलिंग टेस्ट में हम बेसिकली क्या करते हैं वट दिट वी डू इज इनिशियली सपोज आई एम अ पेशेंट I am having features of B12 deficiency. I am having macrocytic anemia. I am having spinal cord changes, ataxia, etc. Right? I am having a geographical tongue. So what uh, you will suspect B12 deficiency? So what you will do? First, you will give radio labeled vitamin B12 to me, and then you check my 24-hour urine for how much B12 is excreted. If you have given vitamin B12 to me and it is getting excreted into urine, it means either uh, there is no B12 deficiency or there is a dietary deficiency. This is called stage one. And then, in case stage one is abnormal. right b12 is not getting excreted into urine you will do stage 2 where intrinsic factor is also given along with b12 so what is the interpretation look at this table part 1 test mein agar normal aaya to part 2 nahi karna hai normal test will indicate either normal patient or dietary b12 deficiency right in case partial mein low excretion ho raha hai it is abnormal and it is a normal with part 2 intrinsic factor dene ke baad normal ho gaya you will suspect pernicious anemia in the patient and suppose ek patient mein b12 dene ke Uh, akela b12 also not getting excreted when you give intrinsic factor then also b12 not getting excreted it will indicate malabsorption that is ileal absorption or ileal resection is the cause ki b12 absorb nahi ho raha hai even if you are giving b12 to the patient so if both part 1 and part 2 are abnormal it indicates malabsorption right so this is a very useful test kya fmg mein is test ka interpretation pucha gaya hai no can has it been asked in neat pg and uh, ini ct exams yes so just to be on the safe side मोटा मोटा समझ लो कि वॉट वी डू इज शिलिंग टेस्ट इज बी एज शिलिंग टेस्ट कैसे करना है गिव रेडियो लेबल बी ट्वेल्व टू मी देन यू चेक माई यूरिन इफ यूरिन में निकल रहा है यू विल से नॉर्मल टेस्ट राइट इट विल इंडिकेट आई द नॉर्मल पेशेंट और डायट्री बी ट्वेल्व डिफिशियंसी सपोज यू गिव बी ट्वेल्व टू मी एंड इट इज नॉट कमिंग आउट इन टू यूरिन देन यू डू स्टेज टू टेस्ट स्टेज टू टेस्ट में क्या करोगे यू विल गिव इंट्रेंसिक फैक्टर टू मी If on giving intrinsic factor it starts coming into urine, it will indicate intrinsic factor deficiency like pernicious anemia. And in case patient is not getting it, you know, uh, on intrinsic factor also absorb भी नहीं हो रहा है, so it will indicate ileal problem in the patient. In case you have any problem, you can always get back to me and I will give you a more detailed analysis of this on social media, right? So this is the Schilling's test. So please add it to your notes. Also, there was a MCQ 2016 question. The question was. Patient presented with sensory ataxia, patchy loss of tongue, uh, tongue papillae, and anemia with raised MCV. 104 FL is the value. Anything more than 100 is macrocytic anemia. Which investigation will you do? Patchy loss of tongue papillae usually indicates a geographical tongue. You all know, in case there is a geographical tongue, there is spinal cord posterior column involvement, and uh, macrocytic anemia in the patient, it is likely to be. macrocytic anemia due to b12 deficiency and which test will you like to do do serum vitamin b12 level it is a 2016 mcq yaad kar lo in some way or the other it can be repeated in the paper let's move further and uh, there was a mcq 2019 which was asked three year old child presents with stetoria stetoria means fatty stool weight loss and features of malabsorption which test to be done for the confirmation of diagnosis क्वेश्चन कह रहा है कंफर्मेशन ऑफ डायग्नोसिस थ्री ईयर ओल्ड चाइल्ड में अगर फैट मेल एब्जॉर्प्शन हो रहा है वेट लॉस इज हैपनिंग यू विल सस्पेक्ट सीलियर डिजीज राइट वीट एलर्जी ग्लूटेन सेंसिटिव एंटरोपैथी 
तो स्क्रीनिंग के लिए तो वी डू एंटीबॉडी टेस्टिंग बट इफ दिस कंफर्मेशन के लिए क्या करेंगे इट विल ऑलवेज बी स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइनल म्यूकोजल बायोप्सी यू विल डू अपर जी एंडोस्कोपी एंड टेक आउट जेजुनल बायोप्सी राइट Another similar sounding question. अब ये बच्चा नहीं है दिस इज अ लेडी फोर्टी वन ईयर ओल्ड लेडी प्रेजेंट विद मैल ऑप्शन डायरिया सिंस मोर देन थ्री मंथस विच इन्वेस्टिगेशन विल यू डू यहां पर यू विल नॉट थिंक ऑफ सीलियर डिजीज सीलियर डिजीज कैन अकर इन एडल्ट येस इट कैन अकर इन एडल्ट राइट बट इसमें क्या कह रहे हैं वो डायरिया तीन महीने से है तीन या चार महीने से है इन पेशेंट ऑफ सीलियर डिजीज दे विल हैव डायरिया ऑन एंड ऑफ गोइंग ऑन सिंस देयर चाइल्डहुड अभी अगर सिंस मोर देन थ्री मंथ से है यू विल थिंक ऑफ सम स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइनल कॉज इट कैन बी एनीथिंग लाइक वीपल्स डिजीज ट्रॉपिकल स्प्रू सम वेरिएंट ऑफ सीलियर डिजीज सो व्हाट इन्वेस्टिगेशन वुड यू लाइक टू डू अगेन द आंसर विल बी सेम स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइनल बायोप्सी तो ये सारे सिमिलर साउंडिंग क्वेश्चन है यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड ब्रेक इट डाउन वॉट द एग्जामिनर इज सेंग द कन्फर्मेटरी टेस्ट इन अ लाइकली मेल ऑप्शन In case of B12 deficiency feature, it is B12 estimation. In case of other causes, it is usually confirmatory test is always small intestinal biopsy. This funda you need to remember for the exam, right? हम लोग theory पढ़ लेते हैं, लेकिन what we fail to understand is if a case scenario is asked, how we are going to answer? This is how questions are being asked in the exams. And uh, let's discuss a few words about celiac disease. Celiac disease is also called as celiac sprue. It is also called as gluten sensitive enteropathy. Patients with celiac disease are allergic to gluten in the diet. gluten has components called as tissue transglutaminins patients who have celiac disease when they eat cereals like this there is a inflammatory reaction which damages the gut mucosa usse malabsorption is produced that condition is called as celiac disease you already know what is asked in exams are safe foods and unsafe foods so celiac disease mein unsafe foods kya hain july fmg 23 question tha so say unsafe foods can be remembered by the mnemonic bro so what are the unsafe foods barley is unsafe Rice is unsafe, oats are unsafe, wheat is unsafe, and when we say wheat, it includes the wheat derivatives like suji or semolina. Suji semolina was mentioned in one of the options in July FMG. So, ये unsafe हैं, ये नहीं खा सकते. On the other hand, if the question says what are the safe foods, rice is safe, including poha, right? So, if you say poha, that is a safe food. Maize is safe. not just that flax seeds are safe quinoa quinoa rice is now you know uh, uh, all these restaurants uh, these are available that is safe tapioca particularly in kerala and south india you will find tapioca uh, based products to be there sorghum which is a type of millet that is safe there is a millet called as amaranthus amaranthus which is safe and finally chia seeds chia seeds they are safe so these are safe foods that you need to remember some of them you know already some of them are additional they are mentioned in the textbooks please add it to your notes if i am a examiner and i want to repeat the question is bar mein option mushkil banaunga if i have to repeat it that is what usually happens right add it to your notes now what about the association celiac disease is associated with multiple conditions first of all it is associated with hla what is the most most common hla associated with celiac disease it is hla dq2 allele which is associated followed by hla dq8 allele so the two hlas associated are dq2 and dq8 agar ek choose karna ho dq2 is the better answer second association includes if you remember there is a dermatological condition in children where vesico bullous lesions are produced and it responds to gluten free diet called as dermatitis herpetiformis so dermatitis herpetiformis is associated with celiac disease thirdly autoimmune disorders like type 1 diabetes mellitus is more common in celiac disease fourth association there is a primary immunodeficiency jahan iga nahi banta called as selective iga deficiency there is a disorder where iga selectively is not produced it's a primary immunodeficiency and fifthly celiac disease is associated with syndromes particularly down syndrome and turner syndrome rarely kleinfelter can also be associated but down and turner are frequently associated followed by klein filter if you don't have any other option but down and turner will always be they are mentioned in harrison uh, textbook of medicine as well so these are the associations now coming to the screening investigation the screening investigation is always doing total iga level ye yaad kar lo total iga is always done along with iga variety of anti ttg this combination is now considered to be the screening investigation of choice as per all standard guidelines पहले टीटीजी अलोन करते थे इट्स अ मेजर अपडेट प्लीज अपडेट योर नोट्स 
आईजीए टीटीजी के साथ में टोटल आईजीए करना मैंडेटरी है इट्स अ मेजर मेजर अपडेट एंड दैट इज वाई इज अ गुड पॉसिबिलिटी एग्जामिनर में पुट अ क्वेश्चन ऑन दिस आइदर दिस और इन दी नेक्स्ट फ्यूचर एग्जाम सो आईजीए विद टीटीजी टीटीजी इज द मोस्ट सेंसिटिव टेस्ट अगर वो ऑप्शन में ना हो द सेकेंड बेस्ट स्क्रीनिंग इन्वेस्टिगेशन विल बी टोटल आईजीए अलॉन्ग विद आईजीए एंड टीईएमए टीटीजी का मतलब होता है टीटीजी स्टैंड फॉर टिश्यू ट्रांसग्लूटामिनेस टिश्यू ट्रांसग्लूटामिनेस राइट एंड ईएमए का मतलब होता है एंटी एंडोमाइसियल एंटीबॉडी एंटी एंडोमाइसियल एंटीबॉडी वॉट इज द इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस विल ऑब्वियसली बी अपर जीआई एंडोस्कोपी फॉलोड बाय बायोप्सी and where do you take biopsy from they can ask in exam biopsy is usually taken from jejunum so jejunal biopsy is taken in these patients what will be the hallmark on biopsy biopsy mein mein kya milega you will find villus atrophy villus atrophy jo villi hote hain wo to atrophied ho jayenge along with increase in the crypts of libricum there will be inflammation in the intestine due to because inflammation is happening right inflammatory damage so lymphocyte honge sath mein villus will be atrophied and crypts of libricum increase ho jayenge and what will be the what is the name of histological classification which is used the name is called as marsh grading also called as marsh staging naam hi puchhenge they will not ask the details marsh staging kis mein use hota hai celiac disease then dizylose test ek obsolete test hai aajkal nahi karte but if they ask you what happens to dizylose test it is decreased or it is abnormal because absorption ko ye check karta hai in patients with normal mucosa dizylose test excretion into urine is normal in these patients it is decreased and uh, what is the long term sequel or complication git lymphomas like maltoma can occur in these patients and uh, what is the treatment the only treatment possible is lifelong strict gluten free diet there is no other therapy available for celiac disease moving further we have few words regarding whipple's disease a whipple's disease jo hai it is mcq kaise bolega in mcq examiner look at the points which i am mentioning examiner will say adult patient bachche mein nahi hoga usually 40 year male hoga so adult patient malabsorption hai weight loss hai there may or may not be pain abdomen arthralgias are there in fact arthralgias jo hote hain the pain in the joints can precede git symptoms so examiner aise bolega ki patient ko non specific joint pains the few months or years later he presented with malabsorption and weight loss and if untreated many of them develop cns involvement in the form of confusion altered sensorium seizures and cvs features like tachycardia and sometimes ccf can also happen in the patient so koi malabsorption disorder jisme cns hai cvs hai and joint pains hai what will you think of it is whipple's disease and what is the causative agent it is a gram positive bacilli it is a gram positive bacillus known as trophorhyma trophorhyma whipplei trophorhyma whipplei राइट एंड किस एज में कॉमनली इफेक्ट करता है इट यूजुअली इफेक्ट्स मेन इन द एज ऑफ 30 टू 50 इयर्स सो इट विल बी यूजुअली अ 40 और 45 ईयर ओल्ड मेल दैट इज हाउ क्वेश्चन विल से व्हाट विल बी द एज एंड जेंडर एज आई सेड 30 टू 50 इयर्स एंड मेल मेल पर्सन मेल पेशेंट विल बी देयर व्हाट इज द इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस यू विल टेक बायोप्सी अपर जीए एंडोस्कोपी फॉलोड बाय बायोप्सी एंड बायोप्सी विल शो द प्रेजेंस ऑफ पास पॉजिटिव इंक्लूजंस इन द बिलाय These past positive inclusions are nothing but Treforema viplai. Treforema viplai जो खुद होता है यह past positive होता है Periodic acid shift stain को यह take up करता है And what is the treatment in these patients? Treatment in these patients is broad spectrum antibiotics. However, treatment is you know still not very effective and relapses occur. in more than 60% cases so multiple courses of antibiotics need to be given it is a poorly understood and poorly manageable condition whipple's disease is the answer here let's move further uh, now we come to the star topic of this discussion that is inflammatory bowel disease there are two types of inflammatory bowel disease you know there is crohn's disease and second is ulcerative colitis sometimes in exams wo directly puchhenge alternative name puch sakte hain so this is written as uc this is written as cd ulcerative colitis ke other names bhi hain this is also called as granulomatous colitis 
it can involve the colon but there will be non caseating granuloma so granulomatous cholitis is the other name ye kabhi ye mostly ileum ko involve karta hai so it is also called as regional ileitis these are the other names the older names of crohn's disease right to agar ye puchhenge to ye bhi crohn's disease hi hai now how to distinguish between them i have made a table which i will be filling this table covers almost all the mcqs asked in fmg as well as neat pg in the last 7 years right and some added points also i have taken so let us have a look at the table so this is the table that we are going to fill in so family history and concordance in twins किस में ज्यादा कॉमन है क्रॉन्स डिजीज में या अल्सरेटिव कोलाइटिस में क्रॉन्स डिजीज इट इज मोर कॉमन अल्सरेटिव कोलाइटिस समटाइम्स सो फैमिली हिस्ट्री किस में कॉमन है क्रॉन्स डिजीज में विच डिजीज इज मोर कॉन्कॉर्डेंट इन ट्विंस कॉन्कॉर्डेंस इन ट्विंस मींस अगर एक आइडेंटिकल ट्विन में है तो सेकंड आइडेंटिकल ट्विन विल हैव हायर रिस्क मोर देन 20 और 30% रिस्क किस में होगा क्रॉन्स डिजीज में होगा देन स्मोकिंग स्मोकिंग वर्सन्स एंड प्रेसिपिटेट्स क्रॉन्स डिजीज बट स्मोकिंग इज protective against ulcerative colitis it's a past fmg mcq smoking is a bad thing but smoking protects against which disease ulcerative colitis appendectomy also called as appendicectomy appendicectomy there is no effect on crohn's disease but appendicectomy protects against ulcerative colitis so it has a protective against on ulcerative colitis ocp use increases the risk of crohn's disease but there is no effect on ulcerative colitis so ocp use is increased by by uh, ocp use increases the risk of which type of ibd it increases the risk of crohn's disease in the patient then what is the most common type of auto antibody it is anti saccharomyces cerevisiae antibody called as asca positivity is seen in crohn's disease on the other hand p anca positivity is more commonly seen in patients with ulcerative colitis then coming to the site of involvement i have already told you Crohn's disease can involve any part of the body starting from mouth to anus however most common involvement is in the terminal ileum it can involve colon also but terminal ileum is the most commonly involved site what is the uh, site here it is colon the entire colon is involved that is why the name is colitis particularly rectum rectum is most commonly involved then what are the types of lesions lesions in these patients are skip lesions skip lesions means continuous nahi hote hain discontinuous lesion hote hain thoda sa normal area fir ulcer aaya fir aur normal area fir ulcer aaya in ulcerative colitis rectum se pura ka pura area continuously ek lesion hoga so it will be a diffuse lesion seen in ulcerative colitis then as i said spread will be discontinuous here and ulcerative colitis it will be continuous here gut wall thickening kis mein hoga gut wall thickening is present in patients of crohn's disease there is no gut wall thickening happening in ulcerative colitis ulcerative colitis may loss of mucosal hostrations can happen but the gut wall thickening is not usually seen then strictures fistula and fissure there is a neat pg recent question on this stricture fistula fissure kis mein common hai they are seen in crohn's disease they are not seen in ulcerative colitis ab what about malignancy ka risk malignancy risk hota hai yes malignancy risk is there in both it is low how much is the risk of malignancy in crohn's disease it is 1 to 3% ulcerative colitis the risk is high it is average more than 5% in most patients and in long standing disease long standing disease means more than 20 to 30 years the risk is more than 20% to jitna time bitega ulcerative colitis mein risk of colorectal cancer will be even more right malignancy risk is there in both but more common in ulcerative colitis moving further what about a microscopic examination what will you find on microscopic examination in crohn's disease you will find a few words first word to remember is they have transmural inflammation puri thickness the entire thickness of the gut will be inflamed so that is called as transmural inflammation along with that they will have non caseating granulomas that is why one of the name was granulomatous colitis right non caseating granulomas will be there thirdly there will be extensive fibrosis cirrhosis so cirrhosal layer inflammation and multiple lymph nodes lymphoid infiltration will be prominently present throughout the gut wall ulcerative colitis mein kya hoga there will not be transmural inflammation here there will be mucosal and submucosal inflammation right puri thickness involved nahi hogi so cirrhosa involvement bhi nahi hoga but they will have something very particular there is an mcq on this pseudo polyp formation can occur in ulcerative colitis they can also have cryptitis 
so crypts of liber can can show inflammation and abscesses can develop in them we call them as crypt abscesses so pseudo polyp cryptitis or crypt abscess word use karenge the likely diagnosis will be ulcerative colitis ye pathology ke sath overlap hai similar things are there in pathology also if you look at past paper aa chuka already in fmg exam now what are the types of ulcers seen in these patients iske andar crohn's disease mein focal ulcers hote hain they are deep ulcer because transmural inflammation hai and they give a cobblestone appearance so cobblestone appearance of ulcers when you do uh, endoscopy is seen in these patients ulcerative colitis ke andar you find that there are superficial ulcers but they are मोर एक्सटेंसिव एंड कॉन्टिन्यूस तो लोग बहुत दूर तक जाएंगे लेकिन सुपरफिशियल होंगे सो एक्सटेंसिव एंड कॉन्टिन्यूस रेडियोलॉजिकल अपियरेंस कैसा होगा ऑन हियर क्रॉन्स डिजीज टू साइंस यू नीड टू रिमेंबर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दे हैव अ साइन नोन एज स्ट्रिंग साइन ऑफ कैंटर सो स्ट्रिंग साइन ऑफ कैंटर विल बी प्रेजेंट इन क्रॉन्स डिजीज सेकेंड देर विल बी अ कोलॉनिक अपियरेंस समटाइम्स कॉल्ड एज Hose pipe colon appearance. But hose hose pipe colon is usually a, a rare finding in Crohn's disease. In patients of ulcerative colitis, what you find is a lead pipe colon, lead pipe colon, also called as uh, pipe colon appearance, where there is along with loss of hostrations. Loss of hostrations will be seen radiologically, and it will be a continuous involvement in the inflamed part. are there extra intestinal manifestation they can occur in crohn's disease but they are less they are more commonly seen in ulcerative colitis particularly what are the common uh, in extra intestinal manifestations there are three we need to remember patients with ulcerative colitis have a high risk of developing pyoderma gangrenosum particularly pyoderma gangrenosum occurs on the lower limbs of the patient where there is a ulcerative lesion forming with granulation tissue in the base secondly these patients can have primary sclerosis primary sclerosing cholangitis which is common primary sclerosing cholangitis is common and thirdly arthritis risk is increased in these patients which arthritis is very common ankylosing spondylitis is very common in patients of ulcerative colitis now coming to the treatment part treatment recent mcqs have been asked on crohn's disease as well as ulcerative colitis so remember we'll keep it simple in cases of mild to moderate patients mild to moderate crohn's disease patient it is usually found that five asa agents five amino salicylic acid agents are not very effective so topical steroids or locally acting steroids like budesonide are effective locally acting steroids like budesonide can be given budesonide enemas can be given budesonide oral preparations can be given and then in case patient is having a severe crohn's disease or complications or acute exacerbation then you need to give systemic steroids systemic steroids need to be given budesonide be steroid but locally acting steroids systemic steroids like prednisolone will need to be given in these patients you can consider plus minus azathioprine or 6 mercaptopurine and if that also fails then you need to consider biological agents if that fails you need to consider biological agents like infliximab anti tnf alpha therapy needs to be considered on the other hand in ulcerative colitis in case it is mild to moderate patient you will find that 5 asa based agents are the initial therapy of choice 5 asa is 5 amino salicylic acid iske typical example hote hain mesalamine another drug is sulfa salazine not very popular but sabse pehle ye use hota tha and uh, aaj ka ek aur drug hai balsalamide balsalazide sorry balsalazide balsalazide which can be used and uh, in case of severe or acute exacerbation obviously you need to consider steroids in these patients as well so this is the treatment so what we have done is i have discussed virtually everything which i could find related to these topics in the past years and combined it with some additional information right without making it too overwhelming have a look at some biological agents which are approved in ibd there are four biological agents which are approved in ibd according to uh, harrison 21st edition it says that uh, the four agents include anti tnf alpha agents so because tumor necrosis factor is involved in the pathogenesis so four anti tnf agents have been approved first we have infliximab second we have adalimumab both of them are anti tnf alpha monoclonal antibodies 
they are approved in both ulcerative colitis as well as celiac disease third agent is sertolizumab 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 comes as a pegylated agent so sertolizumab is approved for use in only severe crohn's disease it is not useful in it is not indicated in ulcerative colitis and fourth is golimumab golimumab it is approved for use in severe ulcerative colitis not in crohn's disease so do agent to sab mein useful hai ye dono jo hai they are specific and they can be used in these patients and then what is toxic megacolon toxic megacolon when the dilatation when the dilatation of transverse colon becomes more than 6 cm diameter along with loss of hostrations that is called as toxic megacolon there is a high risk of perforation and this can occur in untreated patients or severe patients of ulcerative colitis That is toxic megacolon. So value क्या है? Six more than six centimeter. इसके ऊपर MCQ has been asked. Now have a look at some MCQ question. मैं option नहीं दे रहा हूँ. Thirty five year old patient of ulcerative colitis presented with ulcer on the anterior aspect of leg as shown below. What is the likely diagnosis? I told you, ulcer on the lower limbs with granulation tissue in the center and pink to grey grand uh, border in the patient. What is the likely diagnosis? Yes, this is a patient who is having pyoderma gangrenosum. we have already discussed there are three important extra intestinal manifestation of ulcerative colitis pyoderma gangrenosum ankylosing spondylitis and other arthritis and primary sclerosing cholangitis then we have mcq 2019 which among the following is correct regarding the risk of malignancy in patient of ulcerative colitis let us go one by one they are asking the correct statement ulcerative colitis is not pre malignant is a wrong statement more risk in younger patient is a wrong statement because long standing disease mein hota hai risk is increased in smoker wrong smokers don't get ulcerative colitis so malignancy bhi nahi hoga malignancy associated with uc risk is increased with increased duration of the disease is a correct statement what do we need to remember remember this point that in ulcerative colitis malignancy risk is increased with increased duration as well as extent of the disease and also note that there is a past old mcq on this that ulcerative colitis associated malignancy in the colorectal region usme kya kya ho sakta hai low grade dysplasia can happen high grade dysplasia can happen pleomorphism in tumor cells can happen cellular atypia can happen lekin metaplasia nahi hota remember that there is no metaplastic change which is seen in ulcerative colitis associated malignancy it's a past mcq point uh, you will find it in the past papers then there is a question uh, sometimes they ask you about upper git bleeding अपर जीआईटी ब्लीडिंग कैसे पता चलेगा एमसीक्यू अगर केस आता है अपर जीआईटी ब्लीडिंग रेफर्स टू जीआईटी ब्लीडिंग प्रोक्सिमल टू लिगामेंट ऑफ ट्रीट्स एंड इट ऑलवेज प्रेजेंट सेज हेमेटमेसिस और मलिना हेमेटमेसिस मींस फ्रेश ब्लड इन दी वॉमिटिंग मलिना मींस तारी ब्लैक कलर्ड ऑल्टर्ड ब्लड प्रेजेंट इन दी स्टूल हेमेटोशीज या इज यूजली नॉट सीन इन अपर जीआईटी ब्लीडिंग नाउ व्हाट इज द सिनेरियोस दे कैन आस्क इन एग्जाम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अगर बोले कि पेशेंट इज हैविंग क्रॉनिक लीवर डिजीज अलोंग विद स्प्लीनो मेगली एंड अपर जीआईटी ब्लीडिंग इज हैपनिंग सो दे वी विल से हेमेटामेसिस मिलीना क्रॉनिक लीवर डिजीज स्प्लीनो मेगली व्हाट विल यू थिंक यू विल थिंक ऑफ वेरिसियल ब्लीडिंग इन द पेशेंट सो वेरिसियल ब्लीड और इसोफेजियल वेरिसिस विल बी द कॉज ऑफ ब्लीडिंग ड्यू टू पोर्टल हाइपरटेंशन इन द पेशेंट इज देयर अ क्वेश्चन आस्क्ड ऑन दिस यस देयर इज अ केस सिनेरियो आस्क्ड ऑन दिस ऑलरेडी so please add it to your notes when you practice you will come across that look at the second if the question says alcoholic binge drinking ho raha hai ya uh, there was alcoholic binge drinking followed by vomiting leading to upper gi bleed or bulimia nervosa patient having forced vomiting causing bleeding the likely diagnosis in the patient the cause of upper gi bleeding is going to be mallory weiss tears to so key words mallory weiss tears jo hote hain they are tears they are longitudinal superficial tears or ulcers developing due to vomiting due to retching in the patient mallory weiss tears ko conservatively manage kar sakte hain very rarely they require surgery if the question says severe retching hai bahut zyada forceful vomiting kar raha hai and patient develops subcutaneous emphysema now it is not likely to be mallory weiss tear this is a syndrome called as boerhave syndrome 
बोर हवे सिंड्रोम में क्या होगा इट इज ऑल्सो एसोसिएटेड विद एल्कोहलिक पेशेंट हु डू अलॉट ऑफ वॉमिटिंग बट एंटायर लोअर इसोफेगस रप्चर हो जाएगा सो देर विल बी ट्रांस मूरल एंटायर थिकनेस रप्चर ऑफ द इसोफेगस विल हैपन प्रोड्यूसिंग सब कुटेनिस एम्फाइसीमा अर्जेंट थेरेपी सी सी टी इज यूजली नीडेड सी टी स्कैन करना पड़ेगा एंड अर्जेंट सर्जरी विल बी नीडेड इन दीज पेशेंट्स राइट रिलेटेड टू दिस यू कैन गेट दिस ट्रायड इन द एग्जाम दे विल से देर इज अ पेशेंट हैविंग वॉमिटिंग चेस्ट पेन एंड सब कुटेनियस एम्फाइसिमा पेशेंट ऑफ पेशेंट प्रेजेंटिंग टू यू दिस एंड दिस वॉमिटिंग इज ऑलवेज इज यूजली इन द फॉर्म ऑफ हेमेटमेसिस सो ब्लडी वॉमिटिंग इन द पेशेंट Along with chest pain and subcutaneous emphysema, this is called as Meckler's triad. Meckler's triad has been described in patients of Boerhaave syndrome. It has been described in which condition? Boerhaave syndrome. Moving further, some miscellaneous one-liners. Helicobacter pylori, kya kya karta hai? First of all, Helicobacter pylori produces peptic ulcer. So peptic ulcer, what is the most common cause? H. pylori. 70% duodenal ulcer, 50% gastric ulcer. These percentages asked in the NEET PG exam, so you can remember for FMG also. Gastric adenocarcinoma can happen due to H. pylori, but distal carcinomas are, are uh, common and gastric lymphomas have also been described. It can also produce functional dyspepsia where ulcers are not there, but you know, uh, bloating, abdominal distension kind of non-specific complaints will be produced. Carcinoids are not caused by H. pylori and it is a past FMG MCQ point. So carcinoid tubers are not precipitated by H. pylori and something very important update Harrison ke nahi edition mein aya hai. H. pylori kiska risk kam karta hai? Iska matlab ye nahi ki you start infecting the patient with H. pylori. But H. pylori infected patients have low risk of GERD in the patient. So reflux disease is less common and GERD se kaun sa tumors associated hote hai? Adenocarcinoma of esophagus. is also reduced so gastric esophagus gastric adenocarcinoma risk to badhata hai but h pylori reduces the risk of adenocarcinoma of esophagus very very important point it is a potential mcq point potential mcq point very important right it is mentioned very prominently and then it's very similar image very similar photograph was given in july fmg 23 paper ki ek patient hai who uh, in whom gastric symptoms were there and apne fir uske baad then you perform surgical resection and this is what you found this is a ball collection of ball of hair forming the outline of a stomach this is what you call as trichobezoar trichobezoar jo hota hai it is more commonly seen what happens is these are usually commonly seen in psychiatric patients or those having trichotillomania trichotillomania mein kya hota hai patients apna bal they will keep pulling it and then they will keep on swallowing it these hair will start getting impacted under the effect of under other tissues necrotic debris and stomach acids they will form a ball like structure and they can cause obstructive features they need to be surgically removed that is what you call as trichobezoar there are other types of bezoars also there is gastric bezoar lactobezoar etc but trichobezoar is the one which is dramatic composed of hair so kiska bana hai hair swallowed hair is the chief component of trichobezoar and finally look at this picture this is a typical appearance they give this endoscopic finding and they say look at this appearance and tell the diagnosis brain jaisa appearance hai ise kehte hain cerebri form appearance of gastric mucosa cerebri form appearance of gastric mucosa is seen in which condition it is seen in patient with menetrier's disease what are the key points about menetrier's disease you should know there is cerebri form appearance of gastric mucosa there is also foveolar cell hyperplasia antrum is always paired in the patient it's a past neat pg question and can also be produced by cmv infection it's again a past inict question neat pg mein aap bolenge sir ye kyun padha rahe hain because menetrier disease pe question aa chuka hai so at least three or four points so we need to remember na because examiners are going to be the same and exams are becoming more clinical that is why you know so antrum is paired can also be produced by cmv infection what is the uh, drug of choice in these patients that is a monoclonal antibody called as cetuximab right so this covers our git part let us quickly review now the hepatology part now in hepatology in medicine the one thing which is very frequently asked in the fmg exam and all the other exams also are the scoring systems scoring system like meld score peld score uh, now you have the child turcot pug score and we also have our nasers prognostic score all these are very frequently asked in the exam so scores in hepatology you must revise in the last week before you go for the exam let us do a quick revision with me also i will be sharing some mnemonics also so first of all we have the meld score meld score literally stands for 
model for end stage liver disease this score was devised to identify what are the patients who have a higher chance of mortality and what are the patients who require liver transplant so it is useful in chronic liver diseases and particularly those which are progressing to end stage liver disease like cirrhosis so there are a few points that we need to know first of all meld score predicts the prognosis and mortality in end stage liver disease right second point there is a scoring system details they will never ask you the minimum score possible in meld score is 6 and maximum score possible in meld score is 40 any patient who has a score more than 17 that patient can be listed for orthotopic liver transplantation right and fourth is the components of meld score if you look at past paper component of meld score is already asked in the exam the easy way to remember component of meld score is meld score mein the mnemonic is cbi we have the cbi that is central bureau of investigation c stands for creatinine b stands for bilirubin तो सीरम में ऑब्वियसली सीरम में करेंगे ना बिकॉज किडनी में तो नहीं करेंगे यूरिन में तो नहीं करेंगे सो सीरम क्रेटिनिन सीरम बिलिरुबिन एंड आई स्टैंड फॉर आई एन आर आई एन आर स्टैंड फॉर इंटरनेशनल नॉर्मलाइज डायरेक्शो राइट तो ये तीन कंपोनेंट है दीज थ्री कंपोनेंट आर कंसिडर्ड द कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ मेल्ड स्कोर सो क्वेश्चन कैसे आएगा ऑल ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ मेल्ड स्कोर एक्सेप्ट या बोलेंगे आइडेंटिफाई दी करेक्ट कॉम्पोनेंट फाउंड इन मेल्ड स्कोर सो द निमोनिक फॉर दैट इज सीबीआई राइट सेकंड स्कोर जो कि बच्चों के जैसा है उसे कहते हैं पेल्ड स्कोर एंड पेल्ड स्कोर के अंदर इज कॉल्ड एस पीडियट्रिक एंड स्टेज लिवर डिजीज इट इज सिमिलर टू मेल्ड स्कोर बट इट इज यूजफुल इन चिल्ड्रन पेल्ड स्कोर के अंदर व्हाट आर दी कंपोनेंट्स हाउ टू रिमेंबर देम देर इज अमोनिक फॉर दिस ऑल्सो द निमोनिक इज अ बिग एप्पल ऑल द कैपिटल वर्ड स्टैंड फॉर दॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ ऑफ द पेल्ड स्कोर the first a stands for age of the child b stands for bilirubin that is serum bilirubin level in the patient i stands for the same inr international normalized ratio g stands for growth failure so growth failure parameters need to be considered here and last a stands for albumin what is the difference between pelt score and meld score if you see carefully creatinine serum creatinin is not a component of pelt score so pediatric end stage liver disease score is different creatinin is not a component and the five components are there wahan par three components were there here five components are there and in the five components you have the mnemonic is a big apple right look at the third score the third score on which a recent question has been asked as recent as 2021 paper is child pug score child pug score is also called as chaik pug turcot score so if they put child pug turcot score or a cpt score ye koi aur score nahi hai don't get confused it is the other name for the child pug score only child pug score was asked in the january fmg 23 exam also and the components how to remember the component iska bhi ek mnemonic hai kaise yaad karna hai stupid way hai ek bacche ko kya chahiye padhe likhe parents तो एक बच्चे को क्या चाहिए तो चाइल्ड पक्ष स्कोर में चाइल्ड हो गया तो चाइल्ड को क्या चाहिए अ चाइल्ड नीड्स एजुकेटेड बाप ई स्टैंड फॉर द फर्स्ट कंपोनेंट एंड बाप स्टैंड फॉर ऑल दी फोर कंपोन ऑल दी फोर कैपिटल वर्ड्स इन बाप स्टैंड फॉर द कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ चाइल्ड पक्ष स्कोर बाप इज अ हिंदी वर्ड विच फॉर दोज वर नॉट वेल वर्स्ट इन हिंदी बाप लिटरली ट्रांसलेट्स टू फादर so a child needs educated father to usko hum we are remembering as child needs educated bab how to remember the components of score of child pug score e stands for encephalopathy so first component of child pug score is encephalopathy second component of child pug score is b which stands for bilirubin a stands for ascites another a stands for albumin and this p stands for prothrombin type sometimes inr can also be used instead of prothrombin time so you can write in bracket inr can also be mentioned inr can also be used instead of prothrombin time alone but these are the five component and in the january fmg 23 paper 
एनसेफ्लोपैथी बिलीरूबिन एसाइटिस एल्बुमिन एंड प्रोथ्रोम्बिन टाइम वर मैंशन इन वेरियस परमोटेशन एंड कॉम्बिनेशन एंड ओनली वन ऑप्शन हैड ऑल दी फाइव कॉम्पोनेट्स मैंशन टूगेदर एंड दैट वॉज दी आंसर तो याद क्या करना है कॉम्पोनेट्स ऑफ चाइल्ड पग स्कोर चाइल्ड पग स्कोर चाइल्ड ये बच्चों में नहीं यूज होता इट इज यूज इन एडल्ट ऑल्सो बट द नेम इज इट्स दी सर नेम ऑफ द पर्सन हु डिस्क्राइब उसका नाम चाइल्ड था सो so, याद कैसे करेंगे हाउ टू रिमेंबर चाइल्ड को चाहिए एजुकेटेड बाप एजुकेटेड में ई एंड बाप में बी ए ए पी दीज आर दाइव कॉम्पोनेंट्स एनसेफ्लोपैथी एनसेफ्लोपैथी बिलीरूबिन एसाइटिस एल्बुमिन एंड प्रोथ्रोमिन राइट लेट्स मूव फर्दर द फोर्थ कॉम्पोनेंट इज नेजर्स प्रोग्नोस्टिक इंडेक्स Now, Nazar's prognostic index is a scoring system which is used in patients of Wilson's disease, right? And its component is what? Again, the child will save from Nazar's eye. Bap, but not a double A bap, single A bap. So the components here are B, A, P. It includes bilirubin. There are three components which are there: serum bilirubin level. Second is does not stand for ascites or albumin level. It stands for AST levels. So AST that is the liver enzyme, aspartate. amino transferases and pt st p stands for prothrombin time so bilirubin ast and pt are considered to be the prognostic uh, the three components of prognostic index of nazar which is used in wilson's disease which is a copper metabolism defect so uh, the next topic we are going to do a quick review is portal hypertension very frequently asked difficult questions are also asked in the exam so portal hypertension what is the definition the definition says harrison says हेपेटिक वीनस प्रेशर ग्रेडियंट एच वी पी जी कैलकुलेट करते हैं इफ इट इज मोर देन फाइव मिलीमीटर ऑफ मकरी वी से पोर्टल हाइपोटेंशन इज दे राइट एंड इफ द प्रेशर इज मोर देन ट्वेल्व दिस इज द टाइम ड्यूरिंग विच डायलिटेशन ऑफ द इसोफेजियल वेसल्स कॉल्ड एज इसोफेजियल वेरिस इज विल अपियर सो इसोफेजियल वेरिक्स कब आएंगे वेन इट द प्रेशर एक्सीड्स मोर देन ट्वेल्व नाउ वेन विल यू सस्पेक्ट पोर्टल हाइपोटेंशन इन द पेशेंट देर इज ऑल्सो अ क्लिनिकल केस सीनेरियो एमसीक्यू वेन यू प्रैक्टिस तो अगर एमसीक्यू बोले सपोज यू सिट इन द एग्जाम और पहला ही क्वेश्चन है इन पेपर बी there is a patient with chronic liver disease or a alcoholic patient or a patient with pre existing liver problem comes to you with a cystitis patient has splenomegaly and patient has bleeding manifestation so you will think of likely cause as portal hypertension so clues kya honge liver disease ascites that is free fluid in the peritoneal cavity enlargement of the spleen and esophageal varices being present this is the clinical picture these are the clues जरूरी नहीं कि सब होंगे बट टू और थ्री ऑफ देम विल बी मेंशन एंड दैट विल बी द क्लू दैट वी आर डीलिंग विद पोर्टल हाइपोटेंशन एज दी कॉज नाउ व्हाट आर द कॉजेस ऑफ पोर्टल हाइपोटेंशन ऑन कॉजेस टू टाइम्स एमसीक्यूज हैव बीन आस्ड इन द एफएमजी पेपर आई विल शो वन ऑफ द क्वेश्चन टू यू ऑल्सो सो लेट अस राइट डाउन द कॉजेस नाउ द कॉजेज ऑफ पोर्टल हाइपोटेंशन कैन बी डिवाइडेड इन थ्री पार्ट प्री हेपेटिक हेपेटिक एंड पोस्ट हेपेटिक सो सबसे पहले वी हैव द प्री हेपेटिक कॉजेस प्री हेपेटिक कॉजेस ओनली थ्री आर इंपॉर्टेंट we have thrombosis occurring in the portal vein so portal vein thrombosis can cause portal hypertension it is considered a prehepatic cause then splenic vein thrombosis can cause it and thirdly idiopathic hypertension with massive splenomegaly which is a syndrome called as banty syndrome also called as banty disease banty syndrome or banty disease is also considered to be a prehepatic portal hypertension then we have the hepatic causes now in the liver itself there can be causes further subdivided into three parts at the level of liver sinusoid before sinusoids that is pre sinusoidal and after sinusoid that is post sinusoidal so hepatic will have further three categories we have pre sinusoidal pre sinusoidal the typical example in the patient will be a parasitic infection called as schistosomiasis then we have a sinusoidal cause it is one of the most common causes of portal hypertension overall that is cirrhosis and then we have the post sinusoidal causes beyond the level of liver sinusoids this includes multiple conditions it includes radiotherapy so radio radiotherapy can cause post sinusoidal hepatic type of portal hypertension it can also occur due to endemic ascites and certain liver toxins can also produce post sinusoidal portal hypertension and then we have third category known as post hepatic portal hypertension liver ke baad in post hepatic hypertension post portal hypertension the most important cause that you need to remember the prototype of this category is bud chiari syndrome 
bud gri syndrome right and uh, apart from that it can also occur in patients with thrombosis of the inferior vena cava thrombosis of the inferior vena cava so this is the causes remember the causes important have been asked in the exam let us have a look there was a <coughs> mcq excuse me there was an mcq asked in 2018 and repeated with some differences in 2019 which among the following is not a prehepatic cause of portal hypertension benti disease is a prehepatic cause portal vein thrombosis is a prehepatic cause clinic vein thrombosis is a prehepatic cause bud cherry syndrome is a post hepatic cause and what is the answer the answer to this question is b this question looks easy it looks easy because we have just discussed it and then you are solving the question things look easy when you have just read them or when you have you know uh, when your preparation is very good so it is always better to mix and match close to the exam and uh, if time is running short try to focus on touching every aspect of your preparation overdoing a few things and not touching other things is going to be you know uh, very problematic for the exam one week before the exam 10 days before the exam sabko aisa lagta hai sabko sabko means every single person always thinks ki mujhe kuch yaad nahi hai that whatever i am reading i am just forgetting everything and whatever i have revised i will forget trust me when you sit in the exam and if you the next two or three weeks you are very sincere with yourself and just go through touch all the major areas of the subjects you will eventually remember because exam mein short note nahi aayega it will not be a theory paper you have to sit and identify char option honge usi mein se ek answer hoga many questions you will know the answer absolutely rightly some of the areas you will take calculated risk and mark it some areas you will take blind risk अगर आपने पढ़ा है तो इवन योर ब्लाइंड रिस्क विल बी अ इंस्टिंक्चुअल रिस्पॉन्स एंड इट विल गो राइट इन पेपर राइट एंड राइट नाउ डोंट ट्राई टू गिव टू मच वेटेज और टू मच टाइम ऑन अननेसेसरी रेयर थिंग्स अननेसेसरी यू नो मॉक एग्जाम्स मॉक एग्जाम्स आर इंपॉर्टेंट बट वेरी क्लोज टू द एग्जाम वन वीक बिफोर द एग्जाम स्टॉप गिविंग मॉक एग्जाम बिकॉज उसका रीजन बड़ा क्लियर है many people many students get depressed agar aapko lagta hai mcq preparation nahi hai yes you must go for it and mock exam ka ideal time kya hai abhi hai agar dena hai you'd give it now but if you try to give it one day before the exam two day before the exam five days before the exam um, it is just going to play mess around with your mind so close to the exam last seven days last 10 days just focus and try to read more in the morning rather than in the evening so that mind din mein chale because exam is also going to happen in the day right let's continue with our discussion so now the there the, you might get questions based upon management of upper git bleeds ab main kya karne wala hu yahan par i am going to make a simple flow chart i don't know question kya aayega aapka funda clear hona chahiye how you are going to manage अपर जी आई टी ब्लीड का पेशेंट आया है हाउ वुड यू नो दिस इज अपर जी आई टी ब्लीड क्लिनिकली द पेशेंट विल हैव हेमेटमेसिस क्वेश्चन बोलेगा पेशेंट इज हैविंग हेमेटमेसिस प्लस माइनस मलीना राइट अगर पेशेंट में पेशेंट आपको अपर जी आई ब्लीड के साथ आया है सो यू विल सस्पेक्ट अपर जी आई ब्लीड इज देयर फर्स्ट थिंग टू डू इन एवरी इमरजेंसी वॉट डू वी डू वी डू एमरजेंसी प्रोसीजर्स लाइक एयर वे ब्रीदिंग एंड सर्कुलेशन एंड अगर पेशेंट के अंदर बहुत ज्यादा ब्लीड हुआ है तो ऑब्वियसली पेशेंट विल बी इन शॉक मोस्ट ऑफ दीज पेशेंट इन ब्रैकेट यू वुड राइट इफ शॉक इज प्रेजेंट ड्यू टू ब्लीडिंग बीपी लो होगा इफ शॉक इज प्रेजेंट ड्यू टू ए मेसिव ब्लीडिंग इन दीज पेशेंट यू विल स्टार्ट आईवी फ्लूड बोलस यू विल स्टार्ट आईवी फ्लूड बोलस यू कैन यूज आईदर रिंगर लैक्टेट or you can use normal saline and kitne fluid bolus dena hai you can give 20 ml per kg body weight and up to 3 boluses can be given up to 3 boluses and while boluses are being given you will also arrange for blood transfusion you will arrange for blood transfusion right now a very important thing to understand blood transfusion jab aap denge to kitna target rakhna hai the target hemoglobin in the patient should always be 7 to 9 gram per deciliter kab kuch books mein 7 to 8 mentioned hai kabhi bhi 9 ke upar nahi lekar jana over transfusion nahi karna very important why it is mentioned in harrison it is a part of the standard guidelines also if you and if somebody has managed in the uh, in in the emergency room 
टुमोरो दोर गोइंग टू बिकम इन टर्न आप लोग मैनेज करोगे आप लोग देखोगे कि वी डोंट ट्राई टू ओवर ट्रांसफ्यूज दी पेशेंट उसका फंडा बड़ा क्लियर है इफ यू गिव ओवर ट्रांसफ्यूजन इट कॉजेज राइज इन दी पोर्टल प्रेशर एंड दिस विल कॉज री ब्लीडिंग एंड वर्सनिंग ऑफ दी प्लेट तो हमें उतना ही देना है जितना जरूरी है सो रिमेंबर द टारगेट हिमोग्लोबिन इन मैसिव अपर जी आई ब्लीड पर्टिकुलरली बिकॉज देर इज अ चांस ऑफ वेरिस इज देयर वी डोंट नो वेरिस इज है या कुछ और रीजन है और इट इज अ ब्लीडिंग पेप्टिकल सो द टारगेट हिमोग्लोबिन विल ऑलवेज बी सेवन टू नाइन ग्राम पर डेसी लीटर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फंडा अगर नाइन के ऊपर जाएंगे इट कैन कॉज री ब्लीडिंग बाई इंक्रीजिंग दी पोर्टल वेनस प्रेशर मैं नहीं लिख रहा हूं बिकॉज इट्स अ रेपिड रिविजन सेशन बट दिस इज अ पॉइंट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर यू कैन एड इट लेटर ऑन इन योर नोट्स आफ्टर इंश्योरिंग एयर वे ब्रीदिंग सर्कुलेशन यू विल डू टू थिंग्स यू विल try to arrange you will you will try to start the patient in case you are suspecting peptic ulcer bleed pu means peptic ulcer bleed so you will start the patient on iv proton pump inhibitors bolus denge or infusion start karenge in case you are suspecting variceal bleed kaise suspect karenge i told you the clues chronic liver disease splenomegaly and uh, varices ka history that will suggest it is likely to be a a portal hypertension related variceal bleed so as a patient may you will give iv octreotide if octreotide is not in the option you can consider somatostatin octreotide is preferred these days bolus deke infusion start karenge they will not and what is the first definite management first definite management that you will do the first definite management to be done in these patients will be endoscopy so what is the therapeutic procedure of choice in any upper gi bleed whether it is peptic ulcer or variceal kyunki dono mein distinguish bhi to yahi karega that is endoscopy and endoscopy mein if you find variceal bleed to be present to kya karenge you will do you will perform a procedure called as endoscopic variceal ligation endoscopic variceal ligation ligate kar denge tie kar denge usko we will try to stop through the endoscope it is also called as EBL endoscopic band ligation. So EBL इसका अदर नेम है हैरिसन इसे कहता है endoscopic variceal ligation, right? और EBL के बाद भी if the patient is not improving, then you can consider in case patient is not improving, if fails, you can consider Sangstecken, Blackmore tube insertion. ये Sangstecken Blackmore tube क्या करेगा? It will do tamponade of the bleeding vessel. Or उसके बाद भी बात नहीं बन रहा, then you will consider surgery in the patient. Example tips: transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt. ये मैंने बहुत simplified बताया है. इसमें बहुत सारे और भी lines हैं. There are more lines. There are more complexities in this. But if you get a case in FMG, they will ask you what is the first step in management. Or this has been done. What is the next step in management? You should be able to answer according to this. Broadly, this is what we do. एंड एंडोस्कोपी कितनी बार कर सकते हैं मैक्सिमम अप टू सपोज पहला वेरिसियल लेगेशन यू डेड एंड द पेशेंट वॉज नॉट इंप्रूविंग सो यू कैन डू सेकंड एंडोस्कोपी राइट एंड इफ सेकंड एंडोस्कोपी आल्सो फेल्स देन थर्ड एंडोस्कोपी इज नॉट डन सो एंडोस्कोपी यू कैन पुट एन एरो एंड राइट अप टू टू टाइम्स एंडोस्कोपी कैन बी डन एंडोस्कोपिक वेरिसियल लेगेशन कैन बी ट्राइड टू टाइम्स जरूरी नहीं एक बार बट इट कैन बी ट्राइड टू टाइम्स एंड एंडोस्कोपी मस्ट बी डन विद इन सिक्स टू एट आवर्स ऑफ पेशेंट प्रेजेंटिंग This within six to eight hours. Ideally, within uh, it must be done within 24 hours. Or if fail, we go for tamponade using Sangstecken Blackmore tube. If we fail, surgical procedures and embolizations of the bleeding vessels need to be done. Right? This is the management of upper GI bleed. Very simple, very important. Uh, answers most of the MCQs which have been asked in the exam. Moving further, how will you prevent variceal bleed? Suppose varices are there, you see varices are there. They are not significant bleeding, and you want to prevent it. So, for prevention of variceal bleed, drug of choice is non-selective beta blockers like propranolol or nedolol. It's a old FMG MCQ. Please mark it. It's a old MCQ one-liner for the exam. Once bleeding stops uh, in varices, you will do a child pug score. Child pug score ka components we have already done. In case you find it is class A child pug score, where the total score will be between five to six, you will do procedure called as TIPS. What is TIPS? TIPS stands stands for Transjugular intrahepatic photosystemic shunt. Transjugular intrahepatic photosystemic shunt. And if the uh, tips child pug score is between class B or C, where the total point score is seven or above, you will evaluate and refer the patient for liver transplant. If a liver transplant is not immediately available, tips can be tried, but the chances of complication and mortality will be higher in these patients. 
राइट एंड ऑल्सो रिमेंबर दैट वेन एवर यू डू टिप्स प्रोसीजर टिप्स का एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट साइड इफेक्ट होता है वॉट इज द साइड इफेक्ट ऑफ टिप्स इट्स अ पास्ट एमसी क्यू वन लाइनर ऑल्सो दैट साइड इफेक्ट ऑफ टिप्स इज ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ दीज चिल्ड्रन कैन हैव वर्सनिंग और प्रेसिपिटेटिंग ऑफ हेपेटिक एनसेफ्लोपैथी सो हेपेटिक एनसेफ्लोपैथी इज अ नोन कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ टिप्स प्रोसीजर नाउ decompensated cirrhosis how would you identify there was a case scenario asked recently in fmg exam how would you identify decompensated cirrhosis what is decompensated where the body is unable to compensate right there will be clues in the question agar mcq examiner bole there is a patient obviously cirrhosis will have a pre existing liver disease aise randomly nahi kisi mein ho jayega so mostly question what will be the pointer four pointer hain which you need to watch out for pehla pointer liver is shrunk so liver will not be having hepatomegaly or palpable so liver will not be palpable in decompensated cirrhosis right pehla point second point mcq examiner will say spider angioma hai look at this can you see this spider varices जहां पर एक सेंट्रल आर्टीरियल है एंड देन देर आर ब्रांचिंग वेसल्स लाइक अ स्पाइडर लेग्स सो दिस इज कॉल्ड अ स्पाइडर एंजियोमा और इन पेशेंट्स के बायोलिटरली इफ यू लुक एट दी पाम्स यू विल फाइंड देर इज अरिदिमा देर इज रेडनेस प्रेजेंट इन दी पाम व्हाई डू स्पाइडर एंजियोमा एंड पामर अरिदिमा अकर दे अकर बिकॉज ऑफ हाइपर ईस्ट्रोजिनीमिया इन डीकम्पनसेटेड सिरोसिस दिस इज अ वन लाइनर क्वेश्चन ऑलरेडी आस्ट इन एफएमजी पेपर्स राइट तो स्पाइडर एंजियोमा पामर अरिदिमा होंगे थर्ड पेशेंट में क्लबिंग होगा कैन यू सी द डिजिटल क्लबिंग प्रेजेंट इन मोस्ट ऑफ द डिजिट्स Clubbing is usually seen in cyanotic heart disease, but it can occur in decompensated cirrhosis also. And hands ke under Dupuytren's contractures honge. It is something you read in surgery as well as orthopedics. And fourthly, hepatic encephalopathy will be there. Why hepatic encephalopathy happens in the patient? The reason for hepatic encephalopathy is because of raised blood ammonia levels. Raised blood ammonia levels will be responsible for hepatic encephalopathy. Now, since we are talking about hepatic encephalopathy. तो डायग्नोसिस क्या होगा पेशेंट में डीकम्पनसेटेड सिरोसिस नाउ हेपेटिक एनसेफ्लोपैथी लेट अस रिवाइज अ फ्यू वन लाइनर्स हियर अ लॉट ऑफ इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स आर देयर अगर पूछें कि व्हाट इज द अर्लीएस्ट साइन ऑफ हेपेटिक एनसेफ्लोपैथी सीएनएस इन्वॉल्वमेंट इन लिवर फेलियर लिवर फेल होगा अमोनिया डिटॉक्सिफाई नहीं होगा अमोनिया एंड सिमिलर टॉक्सिन्स विल कॉज डैमेज रिवर्सिबल इनिशियली लेटर रिवर्सिबल डैमेज टू द ब्रेन दैट इज कॉल्ड एज हेपेटिक एनसेफ्लोपैथी अर्लीएस्ट साइन क्या होगा पेशेंट विल हैव ऑल्टर्ड स्लीप साइकिल a person who normally sleeps at night will now sleep in the day and there will be sudden alteration in the sleep cycle followed by confusion followed by personality changes so these are the early features subtle features in a cirrhotic patient if you find these ye early feature hote hain ki encephalopathy is happening if they say can aphasia happen yes a certain patients can develop aphasia called as anomic aphasia The type of aphasia seen in these patients is anomic aphasia. Types of aphasia, हम लोग CNS में discuss करेंगे in the coming uh, session that we, I will be holding in the rapid revision session part three, right? Then uh, what is the specific sign in these patients? Specific clinical sign that you find. The specific sign of hepatic encephalopathy in the patient is flapping tremors. उसे क्या कहते हैं? Yes, absolutely right. We call it as asphyxis, also called as flapping tremors. Flapping tremors. and what is the uh, eeg finding in these patients when you do eeg you will find that triphasic waves are seen so triphasic waves will be seen in hepatic encephalopathy and what will happen to the blood ammonia levels they will be elevated which we have already written what is the therapy that you can do for hepatic encephalopathy specifically there are four therapies which are allowed you can give oral lactulose you can give oral antibiotics like रिफेक्सीमिन और न्यूमाइसिन थर्डली यू विल यू विल यूज स्पेसिफिक एल फॉर्म्स ऑफ अमाइनो एसिड्स कॉल्ड एज एल ऑर्निथिन एंड एल एसपार्टेड दैट कैन बी यूज इन दीज पेशेंट्स सो दिस इज द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ हेपेटिक एनसेफ्लोपैथी द क्विक रिव्यू दैट यू नीड टू नो फ्रॉम द एग्जाम परस्पेक्टिव मूविंग फर्दर साग वॉट इज साग सीरम एसाइटिक एल्बुमिन ग्रेडियंट In patients of ascites, ascites is free fluid in the peritoneal cavity. आप क्या करोगे? You will take out the peritoneal fluid and then you will perform some test on that. Particular, the most important test that we do is we check कि patient के blood में albumin कितना है. Then we check ascitic fluid में कितना है and subtract it. So serum ascite, uh, serum albumin formula is serum albumin minus ascitic albumin levels. तो टू पॉसिबिलिटीज आएंगी 
either SAG value is equal to or more than 1.1 or it is less than 1.1. If it is equal to or more than 1.1, you will further look at how much is the protein content. So if SAG is high but the protein is low below 2.5, you will think of cirrhosis in the patient and there is a case scenario asked of this. It can also occur in late patients of Burchiari and massive hepatic metastasis. If SAG is high and the protein is also high, you will think of congestive cardiac failure, early Burchiari syndrome, IVC obstruction and sinusoidal obstruction syndrome which is a rare syndrome. In case SAG is less than 1.1, low SAG, this is called as high SAG, this is called as low SAG. Low SAG, the causes will include biliary leakage, nephrotic syndrome, pancreatitis, peritoneal carcinomatosis and tuberculosis. Kya point hai jo bilkul bulne ni chahiye? Cirrhosis, CCF, nephrotic syndrome, tuberculosis or pancreatitis. Baki sab bhul jau, ye paanch point bilkul ni bulne hai because inki upar question aya hai, FMG, NIPG, INIC, Tikander. Baki bhi yaad karkne hai, right? But if, if you are running short on time, last day padna hai, last thing before you enter into exam hall, ye paanch to zarur yaad karke jane, inko galat nahi karna, don't mark them wrong in the exam. Moving further, acute viral hepatitis, lots of one-liners, viral hepatitis can be caused by hepatitis A, B, C, D, E, right? Vaccination is available hai? A ke liye bhi hai, B ke liye bhi hai. C, D, E, there is no vaccine available. I hope you know that. First thing, most common cause of acute viral hepatitis, common misconception look at A, 9. Hepatitis E hai, Harrison ke andar bada clearly mentioned hai. Hepatitis E ka second line hai, Yo, agar aap khulenge. Abhi nahi khulna, FMG crack karne ke baad, jab internship start karenge, selective portion khulenge. What to read, wo tab baat karenge, right? After you give... Uh, after you do your party, after cracking your exam. So think positively, but remember that hepatitis E is the most common cause of acute viral hepatitis. Second, most common cause of fulminant hepatic failure in pregnancy. It's a past FMG question as well as neat PG. Pere neat PG mein aya, pere FMG mein repeat hua. The answer is again hepatitis E. If the question says most common root of CB, HBV infection, percutaneous root. If the question says after a person is infected with HBV, to pehla virological marker konsa jo appear hota blood mein, it is hepatitis B surface antigen, HBS AG or kab aata hai? Between 8 to 12 weeks. So, 2 se 3 mahine ke baad aata hai. Fourth, next point, what is the marker of high infectivity, HBE AG? Yaad kar lo, kisi bhi patient mein, if HBE antigen is positive, highly infectious. And if anti-HBE AG is positive, means iske against antibody hai, to low infectious, right? Maximum chances of chronicity kis mein hote hai? Hepatitis C virus ke andar. And type of interferon, ab chronic, uh, I hope you know ki hepatitis A and E chronic nahi hote, but B, C, D can be chronic. To agar chronic infection ho jai, to we need to use multiple drugs and interferons are commonly used. Which type of interferon is used? There are three types of interferon, alpha, beta, gamma. Tino condition mein single or in combination, hum konsa interferon use karte hai? Interferon alpha, potential MCQ point. Added to your notes, right? Now moving further, HBV serology ke interpretation pe question aata hai. In case a uh, patient is having HBS AG positive and IgM anti HBC positivity and HBE AG is positive. To agar HBS AG positive hai, to iska matlab acute hepatitis B hai. Or in patients mein HBC ki antibody IgM type ki bhi present ho sakti hai. And high infectivity kyun? I told you HBE AG always shows high infectivity. Wahi agar HBS AG positive hai, Lekin IgG antibody hai HBC ki, to that is called as chronic hepatitis B and high infectivity is there because of HBE AG positivity. In case you find that anti-HBE becomes positive, to ye ho jata hai low infective. To funda kya tha? HBE AG agar hai, to high infectivity. HBE AG ki antibody hai, to low infectivity. Then, agar patient mein H surface antigen bhi nahi hai, right? और उसमें एंटी एच की IgG एंटीबॉडी है और एंटी एच भी प्लस माइनस है तो ऐसे पेशेंट को बोलेंगे या तो बहुत पहले हुआ था रिमोट में या लो लेवल हेपेटाइटिस बी का कैरियर है राइट right? ये यूजुअली एग्जाम में नहीं पूछा जाएगा बट इफ यू आर हैविंग अ बैड डे और इसको छोड़ कर जाएंगे तो जरूर एग्जाम में आएगा देन रिकवरी फ्रॉम हेपेटाइटिस बी इन प्रैकेट रिकवरी आफ्टर इन्फेक्शन तो इसको इट इज ऑल्सो रिकन एज रिकवरी फ्रॉम इन्फेक्शन तो ऐसे पेशेंट में क्या होगा सरफेस एंटीजन नेगेटिव है लेकिन एंटीबॉडीज जो हैं सरफेस की भी और आईजीजी की भी वो पॉजिटिव हो जाएंगी और फिर अगर पेशेंट को वैक्सीन लगा है आप में और मुझ में तो हम में क्या होगा हम में सिर्फ एक ही एंटीबॉडी पॉजिटिव होगी एंटी एच क्योंकि रिकॉम्बिनेंट वैक्सीन यूज करते हैं सो दैट प्रोड्यूस एंटी एच बी सरफेस एंटीजन एंटीबॉडीज इन दी पेशेंट तो अगर सिर्फ ये प्रेजेंट है बाकी सब नेगेटिव है तो इम्यूनाइजेशन हेपेटाइटिस बी इन दी रिमोट पास्ट एंड फॉल्स पॉजिटिव रिएक्शन फॉल्स पॉजिटिव एग्जाम में पूछेंगे नहीं तो इम्यूनाइजेशन इज दी ओनली थिंग दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर 
अब क्वेश्चन कैसे आता है एग्जाम में एमसीक्यू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी में क्वेश्चन आया क्वेश्चन वॉज वॉट इज दी लाइकली डायग्नोसिस अगर एच बी एस एजी नेगेटिव है एच बी एजी नेगेटिव है एंटी एच बी एस पॉजिटिव है एंड आई जी जी एंटी एच बी सी पॉजिटिव है नाउ लेट एस गो सिस्टमेटिकली एंड स्लोली एच बी एस देखो एच बीई एजी नेगेटिव है तो मतलब लो इन्फेक्टिविटी है राइट right? तो हाई इन्फेक्टिविटी वाली ऑप्शन तो हो नहीं सकती तो ए और बी ऑप्शन रूल आउट हो गई नाउ बी आर लेफ्ट विद ऑप्शन नंबर सी एंड डी इस पेशेंट के अंदर एंटी एच बी एस पॉजिटिव है और आईजीजी एंटी एच बी सी पॉजिटिविटी है लुक एट दी ऑप्शन विच आर गिवन हेयर अगर ये क्रॉनिक एच बीवी होता तो क्रॉनिक एच बीवी में एच बी एस ए जी पॉजिटिव होता राइट इट इज नॉट क्रॉनिक एच बीवी वाई बिकॉज क्रॉनिक एच बीवी विल हैव एच बी एस ए जी पॉजिटिविटी चाहे एक्टिव इंफेक्शन है या क्रॉनिक है एच बी एस ए जी जरूर होगा तो ये भी नहीं है तो वॉट आर वी लेफ्ट विद प्रीवियस एच बीवी इन्फेक्शन और कौन सी प्रीवियस एच बीवी इन्फेक्शन रिमोट एच बीवी इन्फेक्शन इन दी पास्ट एंड हैव अ लुक हेयर ये जो मैंने आपको बोला था कि इसके ऊपर आने के चांसेस कम है लेकिन आता आ सकता है एग्जाम में छोड़ के जाएंगे और आएगा तो एमसीक्यू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी में आया था राइट सो दिस इज द रीजन आई यू नीड टू यू नो बी थोरो विद द टॉपिक्स ऑन वेयर क्वेश्चन आर रिपीटेडली आस्ट अब ये जो टेबल है दिस टेबल हैज बिन टॉट टू यू मल्टीपल टाइम्स ऑलरेडी आई नो दैट इट इज देयर इन योर नोट्स बट डू यू हैव दैट एक्यूरेसी लेवल इन द क्वेश्चन इन इन दिस टेबल नो गो फॉर इट हो सकता है ना आए बट इफ इट इज आस्ट यू शुड बी मार्किंग इट करेक्टली विद फुल कॉन्फिडेंस राइट सो गो थ्रू दिस टेबल एंड दिस इज दी एमसीक्यू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी विच वॉज आस्ट इन दी एक्साम लेट्स मूव फॉर द हिमोक्रोमेटोसिस हिमोक्रोमेटोसिस पे कभी कभी क्वेश्चंस आते हैं सो व्हाट इज हिमोक्रोमेटोसिस इट इज अ कंडीशन वेयर देर इज आयरन ओवरलोड एंड इट कैन बी हेरिडेटरी और सेकेंडरी हेरिडेटरी और जेनेटिक कॉज अकर्स ड्यू टू एच जीन म्यूटेशन विच अकर्स ऑन क्रोमोसोम सिक्स पी ड्यू टू दिस जीन म्यूटेशन वट हैपन्स इज देर आर लो लेवल्स ऑफ अ मॉलिक्यूल कॉल्ड एज हेप्साइडिन विच इज इन्वॉल्व इन आयरन मेटाबॉलिज्म एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस लो हेप्साइडिन देर इज इंक्रीज आयरन एब्जॉर्बन इन दी गट विच प्रोड्यूसिस आयरन ओवरलोड इन दी पेशेंट आयरन ओवरलोड इज प्रोड्यूस्ड इन दी पेशेंट एंड दिस इंक्रीज आयरन ऑब्जॉर्बन इज मीडिएटेड बाय फेरोपोटेन इट इज मीडिएटेड बाय फेरोपोटेन नाउ वट आर दी ऑर्गन विच आर इन्वॉल्व इन प्रोड्यूसिंग हिमोक्रोमेटोसिस द फर्स्ट ऑर्गन विच इज इन्वॉल्व इज कॉल्ड एज लिवर लिवर इज ऑल्सो दी अर्लिएस्ट ऑर्गन इन्वॉल्व इट इज ऑल्सो दी मोस्ट कॉमन ऑर्गन इन्वॉल्व इन्वॉल्व इन नाइंटी फाइव परसेंट पेशेंट एंड लिवर इन्वॉल्वमेंट प्रोड्यूसिस वॉट इट प्रोड्यूसिस क्रॉनिक liver disease in the patient so chronic liver disease is produced second these patients can have skin involvement in the form of bronze discoloration of the skin so bronze pigmentation of the skin color can be produced due to hemochromatosis third organ involvement will be pancreas pancreatic involvement will lead to endocrine manifestation in the form of diabetes so we call it as bronze diabetes in the patient so the condition bronze diabetes occurs due to pancreatic involvement due to iron overload fourthly these patients can have heart involvement and heart involvement will occur in the form of cardiomyopathy which type of cardiomyopathy occurs you know ki teen tarah ki hoti hai dilated restrictive and hypertrophic so they will have restrictive kind of cardiomyopathy cardiomyopathy ka brief review we will be doing in the next session which will be held in two days from today i will be putting up the notification and timing shortly so heart involvement restrictive cardiomyopathy fifth these patients these patients can have involvement of pituitary gland and because of pituitary gland they can develop endocrine involvement in the form of hypopituitarism and hypopituitarism can also be associated with hypogonadism in the patient and last but not the least these patients can have joint involvement which can produce changes in the form of arthritis and pseudo gout gout like illness in the patient pseudo gout can be produced due to hemochromatosis and what is the treatment of choice in the patient the treatment of choice in hemochromatosis is always multiple phlebotomies so phlebotomy is considered to be the therapy of choice in hemochromatosis let us move further have a look here this is a patient where this particular feature is being seen what you can see in the patient can you see this brown colored ring in the periphery of the cornea due to deposition of copper this is what you called as kf ring also called as kesher fischer rings which occurs due to copper deposition in the decimates membrane of cornea 
copper deposition in Desmet's membrane of cornea. So Keshav fissuring typically seen in which condition? Yes, they are typically seen in a patient with Wilson's disease. They are seen in a patient with Wilson's disease. Now, a few points about Wilson disease. Wilson disease also known as hepatolenticular degeneration. Wilson disease, what is the type of inheritance? It shows autosomal recessive inheritance. What is the gene involved in Wilson's disease? We have ATP7B gene, which is present on chromosome 13. Short arm or long arm? Long arm of chromosome. So chromosome 13Q. Wilson disease, uh, what is the earliest organ to be involved? The earliest organ to be involved in the patient is liver. If they say uh, liver is also the organ to be involved in the first decade of life. What are the organs which are involved in second or third decade of life? Jo ki mein nahi dekha jata. They are not seen in children but occur after 10 years or 12-15 years of age. You have eye involvement in the form of KF rings. Some patients can develop cataracts called as sunflower cataracts. So KF ring is also due to copper and KF ring is also due to copper. And sometimes there can be CNS involvement where copper gets deposited in the basal ganglia. And because of getting deposited in the basal ganglia, these patients can develop features similar to Parkinsonism. So Parkinsonism like features and neuropsychiatric features like hallucinations can occur in the patient. Other sometimes acute hemolytic anemia can also be seen due to free copper getting released into the bloodstream. So these are the manifestations of Wilson disease. What is the screening test that we do? The screening test in the patient is by ceruloplasmin level. So serum ceruloplasmin levels, which is a transport form of copper, is low. So serum ceruloplasmin is low and uh, urinary copper excretion urinary copper excretion is found to be high but it is no, it is an inferior screening test this is the best screening test that we do what is the investigation of choice in these patients the investigation of choice is uh, liver biopsy and on liver biopsy we do quantitative hepatic copper estimation agar aapko mile more than 200 microgram of copper per gram of hepatic tissue dry hepatic tissue that is considered to be diagnostic of Wilson's disease. And what is the treatment in the patient? You need to do chelation therapies. Chelation therapy may we go for earlier. We used to use D-penicillamine. D-penicillamine is outdated. These days we prefer the agent called as Trientin. Trientin is often combined with or without zinc, which is considered to be a maintenance agent. So if you maintenance agent, kya hai? zinc. Hai. How does zinc help? Zinc does not bind copper, but zinc reduces the gut absorption of copper. And in case there are CNS symptoms, you can also consider the, uh, a substance known as tetrathiomolybidate. There is a it's full form of ammonium tetrathiomolybidate. So tetrathiomolybidate is very effective in CNS symptoms in the patient. And uh, Wilson disease, you will always advise diet to be less in copper. So patient ko kya bolenge? Copper ni khana? Patient will say, I don't even eat So there are four foods which are rich in copper. This is a neat PG question. So you should know meat, liver, chocolates, nuts. Remember, meat, liver, chocolate, nuts. Wilson disease will not eat. So simple funda is what is it? If you are tomorrow you are eating chocolate, so somebody says, why are you eating chocolate? I am eating copper. Right? Stupid way, but you will remember it. So Wilson disease ka patient will not eat fruit and nut naam ka chocolate. Nahin Stupid funda, but you will remember it, right? Not asked in FMG exam. And what is the prognostic index? That index is Nasser. Prognostic index of Nasser, right? Let's move further. Inherited hyperbilirubinemia. If you get a question, I'm not going into the details. Yad karlo, two categories hoti hain. Either they are unconjugated, and second, they are conjugated, right? Unconjugated variety may further two categories hain. Those which present in the newborn, so neonatal presentation. And those which have a presentation at any time, they can present in the newborn, in infancy, in childhood, even in adulthood. Neonatal presentation is of two types. krigler nager syndrome, type 1. Second is krigler nager syndrome, type 2. krigler nager syndrome, type 1 is not compatible with life. Most of them develop severe connectors and they die. krigler nager syndrome, type 2, there is some conjugating ability present but uh, these are the patients who respond to phenobarbitone so which variety of 
inherited hyperbilirubinemia responds to phenobarbitone therapy clicking another two when you give phenobarbitone enzyme activity is transiently increased but they always present in newborn anytime including newborn including adulthood is seen in patients with gilbert syndrome and gilbert syndrome is considered to be a mild condition so patient can live a normal life with gilbert syndrome conjugated do hote hain we have rotor syndrome and we have dubin johnson syndrome how to distinguish between them you can do blood test but rotor syndrome there will be normal liver in dubin johnson syndrome you will find the mcq is saying there is a pigmented liver and dubin johnson syndrome ka gene has been asked once in the exam mrcp2 mutations are responsible in producing dubin johnson syndrome so mrcp2 abnormality or mutation is responsible for dubin johnson syndrome so ye chhota sa hai but it covers two past mcqs of yours if you practice question number 17 some mis uh, now miscellaneous one liners uh, autoimmune antibodies kaun si hain which are found in uh, hepatobiliary diseases so there is a list we can make it's a overlap with pathology but often i find people going wrong in the exam so if the question says anti mitochondrial antibody anti mitochondrial antibody it is written as ama this is found to be positive in which condition it is found to be positive in patients with primary biliary cirrhosis primary biliary cirrhosis if the question says the patient is a having a hepatobiliary disease and there is p anka positivity so p anka positivity in hepatobiliary disease not a git disease git we have already done ulcerative colitis here it will be primary scler primary sclerosing cholangitis primary sclerosing cholangitis then if mcq says there is a patient who has anti nuclear antibody similar to sle not the same but similar yeah usme bhi ana hota hai so ana positivity and anti sma antibody sma stands for smooth muscle antigen smooth muscle antigen antibody so you will have a variety a condition called as type 1 AIH AIH stands for autoimmune hepatitis autoimmune hepatitis i'm writing it my table bhi dikha sakta tha i'm writing because ye aap galat karte ho so if you are listening uh, the voice will echo in your mind and you will have a better retention then anti lkm1 antibodies lkm1 stands for liver kidney uh, microsomal liver kidney microsomal type 1 antibodies they are seen in two conditions they are seen in type 2 uh, AIH they are also seen in chronic hepatitis c infection not d hepatitis c and then we have anti liver cytosol antibodies it is also written as lc1 antibodies anti lc1 antibodies are seen in type 2 autoimmune hepatitis and then we have anti lkm2 antibody which is seen in drug induced hepatitis drug induced hepatitis and last but not the least if you have anti lkm3 what condition will you suspect anti lkm3 antibodies will be seen in patients with chronic hepatitis d infection so chronic hepatitis c mein hoti hai lkm1 aur chronic hepatitis d mein hoti hai anti lkm3 important one remember it pathology mein padha hai achhi baat hai miss kiya hai to remember it now medicine mein miss kiya hai so or if you already know it so you can do a small revision here and then we come to the last part miscellaneous one liner so most common cause of non alcoholic fatty liver in the patient there is a syndrome called as metabolic syndrome and india is right now suffering from a mini epidemic of metabolic syndrome because our lifestyle is becoming bad and we are not doing enough exercise eating a lot of junk food metabolic syndrome is a major problem in united states and it is now becoming a major problem in india as well so metabolic syndrome right that is the most common cause of fatty liver apart from alcohol now what is the marker of alcoholic liver disease aapke paas ek patient hai question will come something like this so patient uh, in whom there is a history of some alcoholic intake but the patient also consumes uh, some hepatotoxin related products he also has a history of uh, endemic ascites and multiple viral infections in the past now the patient is developing features of hepatitis what will indicate this is alcoholic liver disease to hum kya karenge we will take the levels of ast 
एंड वी विल टेक द लेवल ऑफ ए राइट दोनों को डिवाइड कर देंगे इफ द ए एस टी बाई ए एल टी रेशियो इज मोर देन टू रेशियो वन ये थ्री इज टू वन फोर इज टू वन फाइव इज टू वन भी हो सकता है दैट इज अ मार्कर ऑफ एल्कोहलिक लिवर डिजीज नॉन एल्कोहलिक हेपेटिक डैमेज में ए एल टी लेवल ज्यादा बढ़ता है या ए एस टी ए एल टी बराबर बढ़ता है इक्विवेलेंट बढ़ता है बट इन पेशेंट्स ऑफ एल्कोहलिक लिवर डिजीज ए एस टी एंड ए एल टी आर एलिवेटेड मोर देन थ्री टू फोर टाइम्स एंड इफ यू डिवाइड दैम The level is more than two ratio one. It's a very very important thing, and it's a past MCQ point as well, right? Next point, 2021 MCQ is CLD patient, chronic liver disease patient presents with abdominal distension. He also comes with fever, abdominal tenderness, pain हो रहा है, and cephalopathy भी हो गई है. What will you suspect in the patient? So, a cystic patient में fever आ जाए, chronic liver disease में the patient has developed spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, typically produced by E. coli. so sbp mostly caused by escherichia coli what will acidic fluid show when you do paracentesis it will be more than 250 cells particularly neutrophils per millimeter cube and what is the therapy of choice iv ceftriaxone that is iv third generation cephalosporins need to be started in the patient so this finishes our discussion uh, it's a rapid revision thing so i'm deliberately only touch those areas which i feel they are important and which i feel will be not overwhelming you with unnecessary information very close to the exam please save this video i will be sharing uh, the pdf of this as well let me just compile it after uh, tonight itself after this uh, session is over and then i you can share it with me you can get in touch with me on instagram this is my instagram id this is my email telegram uh, i am there speed uh, you you can follow there also and for clinical updates where i keep putting small reels for rapid revision you can put it up there as well when will the rapid revision session 2 come a rapid revision session 2 will go live on youtube channel in the evening day after tomorrow that is on 29th and the topics i will be covering are cardiology and pulmonology so if you feel cardio troubles you uh, i will not be teaching you how to read an ecg now the time is long gone but how to identify and what are the common mistakes you make and some flow charts we will be discussing so don't miss join me there and thank you so much for doubts which if you have you are most welcome to ask me Uh, on the social media or you can put it in the comments as well but save this video if medicine is a trouble something for you watch this video again 2x speed once before your exam thank you so much and god bless everyone keep working hard every subject is important go with a positive attitude everyone will pass don't worry about it we meet tomorrow uh, day after tomorrow again thank you so much